not quite sure if this is going to be a lighter skin tone, a darker skin tone. I have no idea yet. I'm literally just chucking paint around here now. We've got some of the... I think that is a little bit of burnt umber right there. Yeah, it's a little bit of burnt umber. Starts to make it a little more reddish. Even a little more red over here. Just moving this around. Having some fun. Yes, Achilles Blade. Didn't we determine not too long ago that uh, have all time is Wapple time? It's like it's always Wapple time. Now you're going to be, like I said, you're going to be getting fireworks. And this is another reason why I'm using the oils because there's a pretty good chance that some of the detonations are actually just going to send the figures flying out of my hands. I mean, that is a very distinct possibility. Because these aren't from a distance. These are like 20 feet away. So yeah, go to a, one of those big community fireworks displays, except it's happening two feet from your house. Oh, let me see. Do you always under underpants oils? Well, <laughs> I really love, I love autocorrect. I love autocorrect on the phone. In the liners method, nope, not always. Actually, there was a session I did not too long ago where I had these things primed very dark brown and didn't do this step at all. It basically took this step away, so I didn't have to do this step. Well, it's not like I have to. It's a step that I choose to do. So it's it's I don't always, actually, I don't always do anything. It's always subject to change. It depends on the figure sometimes, because every figure just presents a different set of challenges. And then there's time I just want to try out different things. So we'll hit this with our sponges too. So actually, I just remembered I had these guys here. These guys actually were done entirely with the contrast paints. I forgot all of this. I think it was Series 9. It was the first army painting series where I used those. Talk about your classic old metal corn berserkers there. Those were some those were some heavy metals, I'll tell you that. Now let's take some of this away. Now this one does have some of that pre-shading, or if you want to call it that, from the primer. So here, ah, here's some of my smaller sponges now. We'll just get this going. There we go. I uh, see we got some heads hanging off of his belt there. Haven't actually really looked at this thing. I basically just sort of stuck it together and then forgot about it because I knew it was going to be a while before I could get to it. And that, it's also, geez, I think actually the last creature caster figure I did was in oils, wasn't it? And we have a Calvadia in the house. And we got K sauce, of course. And let's see. Yes, Snowyak, it's just sometimes I will do something different just to do something different. There's maybe no actual rhyme or reason behind it. It's just to do something a little bit different. Now, the advantage, of course, in doing this, like I just did there, so not only does it enhance some of your pre-shading but now it's got a little it's got colors in it in some places i think we did that this guy that we did in oils i'm pretty sure we did the pre-shading thing on him just the advantage is now i've got some colors in place so let's say we're just going to grab ourselves uh, another brush here and do something like this. Uh, let me grab a different one here. I think I want that more for blending instead. There we go. I'm going to get a little bit of that. Uh, and you can see, see I'm grinding that into the brush there. That's the other important thing that people just kind of find out along the way. So as I do this, you can see it's already blending with what's there. 
because there's already something there. If this was just me doing a basic layer or whatever, kind of your, your traditional sort of layering approach, there would be nothing for it to mix with. So here, let's grab something like this and we can just sort of grind these together here. And, and the nice thing is we're not getting a whole ton of extra paint on here. It's, well, how can I say it? It's not thin down oils. It's just spread out oils. Ooh, that's, that's a good one. That is not a bad term right there. Uh, let's see, in my area, the cancer, well, there's uh there's no large fireworks gatherings here at all. It's just here. Every single person's house has fireworks displays that would rival something you'd see in Washington, D.C. And that's basically every other house. And they've been blowing off fireworks since, well, April. And they'll still be blowing off fireworks until most likely August. That's just kind of how it is, unfortunately. That's why we were joking yesterday. If you want a fun time, book yourself a flight in the Midway Airport right around this time. If you want to know what it's like to be shot down or attempted to have someone shoot you down, fly into Midway around this time. That That's about the... If you want near-death experience in a plane, fly into Midway around this time. You'll enjoy it. Or at least you'll enjoy the terror on the passengers' faces as they see all these missiles coming directly at the plane. Uh, let me see. Oh, pics are fizzy. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Well, I, I know I well, I know exactly what it what it is to be you because hey, that printing stuff. I've been throwing questions at five different people. Why is it doing this? Why did it just do this? What the heck is going on here? And then they'll say, well, just, just do this. And I'm like, well, where is that? They'll, they'll say something like, well, yeah, just uh, uh, do this in the settings. Where are the settings? <laughs> oh, just uh, put it at this. Oh, okay, so where's the supports? Oh, yeah, we didn't do supports. You have to do those. And so all kinds of... I've been chucking questions at people left and right over the last three days. I, I guess that's another... I kind of try and do that sometimes on purpose because, well, it's a little bit of a reintroduction to what it's like to be doing something for the first time and be real unsure of what the heck you're looking at because... With the, the, I didn't know what questions to ask with that stupid printer. And I'm going to have to go through it all over again when I use that Ender 3. It's going to be the same exact thing. I'm going to have no clue what the heck I'm doing. Which is no fun. And we got Art of Mike Disney in the house. And a Paul John's Life. How are you doing? I just want to make sure I get caught up on all of the chat here. And Calvadia, I think I, I did get that. Let's see. We will get all the questions out of the way. Yeah, that's... Uh, well, I, this is, uh, again, part of it is that the, the questions, new things arise as I try new things. So when I started trying to do multiple prints on the same... or multiple miniatures on the same plate, that changed the paradigm. I, I started using a different company's prints that changed the paradigm again because their supports and, and I didn't I didn't realize there was a difference in supports so one company does supports very differently than another essentially one does supports that are like steel girders and another one does supports that are more like uh, one by two plywood or something like that I mean just because the lighter the supports are the less you're going to mess up the figure taking those supports off. And it's one of those, what would you say, it's a, you trade off, right? You get advantages from some and disadvantages from others. And that that's why one of the, 
edicts from the Book of Wapple says if you're too hasty with the blend, and it's it's hard not to be. It's definitely hard not to be. Uh, let's see. Angry Ham, I'll take that in mind. I'm just going to try my hand in oils very soon. Just getting the base colors in black and white. Let's see, I guess I have a, a bunch of brown robed feet. Well, the very first thing that I ever did with oils was winter American bolt action figures. And guess what they had? They had browns, they had grays. Now here I'm actually taking some at some of the cadmium yellow mixed with some of the white. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of the that's my titanium white. And the intention here is to obviously do some blending. I'm also going to grab a little bit of this green over here. Let's get some of this out here. Let's get some of it over here too. So I've just, just basically chucked a whole bunch of different colors out here. Ah, there it is. Come here. An even smaller blending brush. And we're going to work these in together. There's some greens there. Oh, this is the other thing that you just have to constantly be cleaning off that blending brush. You do a couple of strokes, stop, clean it. A couple of strokes, stop, clean it. A couple of more, clean. Here we've got to do the same thing with again a couple of strokes, clean it off, clean it off. A few brush strokes there, and then all of those we just put a whole kaleido or just a whole uh, kaleidoscope of colors in there. I want to do something like this. I'd like to see almost again like it's kind of bruised not just the because then the magenta stuff here is going to stand out and this is going to stand out as opposed to something like this where it's more again that bruised like bruised fruit or something <laughs> that's a very interesting bruised fruit but what do we have here we've got this cool bluish purple now next to a green and by green I mean a very warm type of green well let's do this here let's put it right next to it oh yeah this right here is actually kind of a beat up brush here that wants to kind of do all kinds of nasty frayed things but with the oils look what it does. it's like it's like conditioner you know, like shampoo and conditioner here's the conditioner part oh let's see Magnaris, have you ever done a miniature with more visible brush strokes and less blending? I've seen it look amazing on a painting. Uh, yeah, actually, I am not... Uh, oh gosh, what, what would be the... I'm not in the camp of the total smooth blends at all. I, I never really have been. It just hasn't been my thing at all. So, And I've done... Well, you want to see some 2D art? Here, let's let's look at some 2D art. Now this is a little bit, this is a watercolor that I did. You can see there's more, it's more of a realism, whatever. You don't see as many brush strokes on that. Now here is uh, some portraits that I did. Again, you don't see a whole lot of brush strokes there. Things are more smooth. But then look at this pastel. You can see fingerprints in there. You can definitely see, you can see the marks of the pastel. You can see all of the can still see some of the original paper and so I am definitely not uh, averse to making sure that uh, some brush strokes show up and actually if you check out uh, I think it was it was my birthday stream I might just have to make it into a YouTube video now I think it's still I think it's still a VOD at this point but I was doing a 2d painting of uh, Italian battleship so go check that out before it goes away obviously I will turn it into a YouTube video but as, as someone who has done 2D art for many, many years, I don't mind brushstrokes. 
Uh, I just want to make sure I'm caught up on some things here. I think I, I think I pretty much am. So this was a blending brush a second ago, and now I'm just kind of painting with it. Here, let's get some of that purple over here, too. Look at that, right in here. Bam. So what do we got in here? We've got cerulean blue. We've got sort of a yellow. We've got a purple over here. We've got our magenta stuff going on over here. we got all kinds of fun, wild, wacky colors. Oh, look at this. we got more purple over here. Yeah. Then we're going to put some more magenta in here. And I'm just going to push that around. Get me my blending brush here once more. And there we go. Look at that. It's just, it it shouldn't be this easy, but guess what? It is, it can be that easy. Now we'll take our little bit of a our titanium white into that. Even now, I'm still sort of grinding the paint into the brush to make sure that there's not too much paint on that brush, because too much is too much, and it can become too much in a hurry. That's another, that's a free reading from the Book of Waffle right there. I haven't actually, I don't have the page done yet, but that'll be there soon. Don't fret. That will soon be a, a page that we can give you a reading from. Oh, look at this. Look at that. What we just did in the shadow area there. You wouldn't expect the shadow area to have, I don't know, actually a lighter version of the cerulean blue in it, but there you go. It does now. Why am I doing that? Because, well, I want to contrast it with the the color here in his, uh, and it's kind of a leather thing. Oh, look at this. We're going to put some of that blue in here now. Oh, let's get some skin colors on this. Hit, well, dead skin colors on this. Ah, Drax. He is now from Sweet Home Chicago. Welcome in, Drax. Everybody, be sure that you give Drax a follow. I'm sure you are already, but Drax is another fellow oil painter now. He took the took the plunge and has been doing oils. Uh, actually, well, th I think what your your most mega project with the oils so far has to be Venom. Well, it's sort of a mixed medium because it's a little bit of it is on Venom and then Spidey is mostly the acrylics. And hopefully all that epoxy sculpt set perfectly and that is all just about done now. Uh, let's see, I found that with a miniature you paint generally the way you want it to be pretty thin so it's not obscuring details, but because of the paint it has less body, it's less likely to show brush strokes. However, we do host a painting competition. I think there are other types of blending like stickle, stippling and hash strokes that can look really good if applied consistently. Uh, what is it, Bohuns? I'm not quite sure if that's how you say the name, but he actually does quite literally stippling, like, like painting with sponges. And that's that's what he does, and that's how he likes to do his blending and everything else. Uh, was it Flameon? He has a very different approach. Now his is very much a, you'll never see anything resembling a brushstroke, but that's that's how he likes to do things. I'll, I'll never forget hanging out with Victoria of Victoria Miniatures fame at my first ReaperCon six or seven years ago, and she was definitely not in the whole hide the brushstrokes mindset. She just, she just, I don't know what it is with you lot and brush strokes. Why, why do you, why are you afraid of brush strokes? Hashtag not afraid. Okay, I think I'll go even deeper with this now. I'm mixing again a little bit of the ultramarine violet with the purple matter. Yeah, I'm going to go back over the, the teeth again, but I really just wanted that to... There. Okay, what's going to happen with his... Uh... Oh, that's actually a foot with some of the covering over it now. Look at that. We're going to take some of our 
olive green here. Because we got all that magenta right next to it, why not have some green? So it's a little bit of, again, color contrast there. I'm just going to hit that with some rust straight away. Then we are going to take some of this. Chuck some of that on his foot, on that skull over there. His other foot over here too. And some of this is still, that's just the original. That's that very first glaze that we threw down there. We're still working with that. Oh, after like an hour and a half or so. Still working with that. Now here's another thing too. I, I This is why I work on multiple things here. Because at a certain point you want to set this aside, or at least temporarily. Because people will say, Jam, yeah, I'm blending it, but you see all this texture and stuff. One of the reasons why you'll see that is because you haven't quite waited long enough to do your blending. And sometimes I will just intentionally not blend something right away just move to something else and then come back and do some more like here i do some more blending now on his hands i'm just going to add some of this that's really bright cadmium green right there now here if i want to blend that i got to clean this off we're literally blending bright cadmium green into a magenta but that magenta that sat there for a while that's been there a good 20 25 ish minutes something along those lines you just have to sometimes let this stuff just kind of sit you know, I'm gonna this is some Payne's gray here we're gonna just get some darks now We've had a lot of adding lighter colors. Now we're just going to add in some dark. So again, we're going to get rid of some of the paint that's in there. And we're going to start pushing around some of these darks. Let's go back in with some lighter tones again. So, And you notice I have not washed out any brushes. Haven't done that at all. Gonna quite literally use my thumb palette here. Just putting out some lighter colors for some blending. To have some fun with that. Okay. Now let's do a little bit of blending here. Turn it this way, you can see it a little bit easier. couple of strokes then get rid of that extra paint I can do a couple of brush strokes here get rid of the paint right here you see that big old white line well I'm just gonna grab some of the end of it here push that around clean the brush do the same thing here push some of that around There you go. Let's do some of that over here too. Let's see, uh, let's see. It could work with minis. It has a lot of smooth areas, at least in theory. That is why I suggest things that have a lot of cloaks, whatever. Now, it's, uh, a lot of open surfaces. You know, even, well, actually, something like this. You know, there's a lot of open surfaces there. That would be pretty handy for oils. Or what are the, like the storm cast eternal? Well, wait a minute. What am I talking about? Guys like this, like all the night haunts, these are obviously really handy for stuff like oils. Oh, heck, even this guy right here, he does have, actually, when you think about it, he's got a lot of open surfaces. Now, let's do some, some blending of this stuff over here, too. Just have to remember it, it's discipline. I think that's the other thing too is sometimes there's that discipline that you need to do a couple of brush strokes and then stop. 
couple of brush strokes, then stop. And remember too, we all have to keep in mind that the thinner paint is going to stick to the thicker paint. Now the thing that you're going to learn, and again, as, as someone who's getting into 3D printing, and they're just adding some yellow or some of raw sienna to that cadmium green there, the thin paint doesn't necessarily mean, well, for lack of a better term, watered down paint. It doesn't necessarily mean that. We're going to get some more of this green over here. Because as you saw, especially early on, right, when I would take the craft brush like this and really grind it. Look at this. Check this out. That paint, which has only been on here a little over an hour, barely an hour, I don't want to say it's dry, but it's not like some of these other blobs of paint, right? That's because it's not just thinned down. It's because I'm doing this. I'm literally grinding that paint into the brush. And as I apply this, there's paint that's going on there, but it's just a lot thinner. Even this right here, there's no, I didn't thin this down with any kind of liquid, but because there's not that much oil on there, or paint, really, I should say paint, I don't have to worry about, look at this, even here, I'm, I'm kind of grinding the paint into that brush. This is just like me learning about settings on the 3D printer, where it's like, okay, you have you have it where the the prints are slipping off of the plate, and the whole thing just collapses into your vat. Well, do a longer exposure setting. I didn't know there was such things. I had no idea there was exposure settings. I I should have figured there were, but I sure as heck learned the hard way that there are now. And we we're still messing around with those. I mean, I've already changed them twice. And we definitely got different results. They are not perfect. So I still have to keep playing around with it. And you're going to have to do the same thing too. You will have to do the same thing. And it, I know it's a pain. But just like... Uh, oh, we have Sky King and White Squirrel. How are you doing? Oh, Creature Caster has, has to head out a bit. Uh, I'll, I'll still be going here. It's only 4.11 now. Thanks for stopping in. And I'm glad that the... Uh, Kanuka Mera was uh, very successful. Look at that. Just, uh, you know, there was nothing there. All of a sudden now there is most definitely something there. So those are definitely the things that are just, there's nothing to, oh, let's see, Angry Ham has some Night Haunts. So I've got Night Haunts. I've got actually, I think, well, I don't want to say a whole army, but I've got a decent sized, was that the, the start collecting force or whatever uh, for AOS, right? The, the thing that's usually about 85 to 100 bucks or so with kind of the one big guy, one unit, and then maybe maybe a cav unit in there too. So you're going to be seeing much, much more in oils for me, the the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, which are going to be done in metals, by the way. Oh, look at this. We're going to take some of our Terra Rosa here now. Look at that. Look at now. This is look at how opaque this color is. This is what I mean. This magenta we put up there is super transparent. Terra Rosa is the complete opposite of that. It is very opaque. But welcome in, White Squirrel. Uh, I do appreciate you coming in. So again, there's there's texture on this. Uh, I don't want to call it rube, right? It's almost like it's. Well, I was thinking it was. Uh, it's some kind of a hide or whatever. Definitely some sort of stretched skin. I would say. Now let's uh, do some stuff on on these skulls over here. There's just not much happening there. So I just threw some darker color onto that real quick. I'm also going to I 
I'm then going to do in a dark glaze around that. So I'm going to get some of my Payne's Gray going here. Olive green, mostly Payne's Gray. We'll really thin that down. And this is, believe it or not, this is more of a watercolor thing right here, but we're going to do some negative painting. Negative painting means you're just, you're painting what's not there. So by painting this stuff around the skulls, the skulls actually then show up a little bit more. So essentially, every time I do oil painting sessions like this, I know there's there's going to be a lot of questions. And actually take a little bit of the ultramarine blue and throwing that in there too. So see, that's a much darker now. That skull is going to stand out a little bit more. You must have dark to show light. That's not just for oils, that's for anything. I don't care if you use watercolors, pastels, crayons, it doesn't matter. You must have dark to show light. And that's what we're doing now. We're starting to get some darks in. We're going to do some darker glazes here. Some of these things, that's also going to have some more rust and such thrown on it. And you can go even finer with these these little glazes like this. So now here's a this is a series seven here that's mostly destroyed as you can see. There's only a couple of hairs left. But when it comes to oil paints, oils love little one haired brushes like that. It absolutely loves it. There we go. We'll move some of that around. Just helps me get into all those nice little areas. Let's get a little bit of lighter tone here. And it's, it's also mixing it. Every one of these little brush strokes that I put on here, the paint that's on there is mixing in. Uh, let me see. So does it matter if you mix brushes that you paint oils and acrylics? But Ah, these... All of these brushes, just last night, I was using all of these brushes for acrylics. And the night before, and the night before. Uh, this brush right here, where did you go? This has been used alternately with oils, then acrylics, then oils, then acrylics for weeks. Actually, the one of the first things that I painted it, painted with oils with that is, uh, let's see, let me get to my, there we go, was this. The mega 12-hour project here. So it was painted with oils on that. Uh, let me see. I think. Actually, I was even using that on uh, some of this terrain to paint. Uh, that was done with acrylics and weathering powders. I was using it on my sisters. I've used it on some, uh, almost all of these dark sword miniatures here. So yeah, we've. Uh, heck, I even used it on the school bus. That was acrylic and weathering powders. It's all kinds of fun stuff. So these brushes here, they really can take quite the beating, for sure. I'm going to get some more of this lighter ultramarine violet in a few spots here. Let's do that, like here and here. So I'll do a little bit of it, then stop, and then... Now here I'm just pretty much taking some titanium white. We are going to take the paper towel to the brush there. And then we're going to kind of scumble this and blend it. Same thing here. I'll do a little bit of blending action there. We got Heath, Heath Aldrich. Thank you so much for the raid. We are having some fun with oil paints right here. And we'll let the raiders come on in and then we'll introduce them to the madness or the fun, which is oils. Now that must tip the scale for me to try the oils. Yeah, that's, uh, I was a little bit bummed that the, I think the, 
the 11 hour part of the footage that got a little bit zonked but I do have the four hours from the next day afterwards so I will still be trying to put that on the YouTube channel as a tutorial so for all the folks that are new we are using my basically my homemade oil brushers if you want to call them that so here is this is the things that gave me the idea originally so this is oil paint but it's very thin it's the consistency of miniature paint so what I would do is I would just take some standard oil paint like so oh, thank you for the oh Lord Dave thank you so much for the cheer mix it with the paint thinner then I would put it and now this one doesn't still doesn't have a label on it and you hear that you hear that sound I just mix it in a jar and that's a little agitator right there but we'll definitely have a little bit of what Peleus show up here he's like thank you for the cheer he knows there's bits in here he's gonna get those until he gets chased away by the Nurgle demon big scary Nurgle demon so again working with oil paints here just taking advantage of the wet blending that they offer now this the last time we messed around with our rust over here was a good I want to say half hour ago and that means we could pretty much go back in there now and do some more weathering on that look at this yes remember how easy it was to blend all this to get the non-metallic metal here we'll take our blending brush again blend some of that some of that to get me some more lights on here before we do some more weathering on this light so line right there oh, let me see oh thanks again Lord Dave and let's see that's proved it for the advocator well now I don't know would you would you say that as many people have metal sprue bits as as we do us ancient showbacks us ancient veterans because there's some folks that have told me, well, I don't have that much metal sprues. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. <laughs> we have metal sprues, like a tower of metal sprues from, from all the years of dealing with those. So maybe, I guess, there's not as much in the way of the, uh, the, the metal stuff these days. It's mostly resin and everything else. Now here, we're going to take some Terra Rosa. I even throw a little bit of the cadmium yellow in there and this is going to be our lighter rust color here because we got our darker rust color let's go with a little bit of a lighter rust color oh, let's see I'd the infinity doesn't give you a lot of metal bits neither does privateer press so say we all Oh, thanks Heath well and sneaky Mike Disney sneaky cheeky Mike Disney he's doing the whole gift sub thing look at that it is appreciated believe me it's definitely appreciated so look at this we'll compare this to that now I'm gonna actually take a little bit more of my white spirits here I'm gonna take a touch more of that cadmium yellow let's go back over here Oh, NG Lamines, it's a Lamines. How are you doing? I see that I'm going to have to pass out some more video links to the subscribers now that the whole bunch of people have resubbed and new subs. So that that's something I try and do for folks that subscribe to the channel here. Is I'll I'll take usually like a recent or a pertinent Patreon video, and, and I'll throw the link into an email for you guys for the subscribers if it's something that maybe I've gotten a lot of questions about in a recent twitch broadcast or whatever live stream and I think you know what people could probably use this info so there we go look at that we're able to it's all wet into wet that I know that's another question that happens with the oils well you have to wait to weather why wait to weather you don't have to hashtag no waiting hashtag new no waiting there we go so we we're able to get our lighter rust going on there 
No, thank you. Oh, look at that. We got a hype train. How the heck did that happen? You, you'll have a limited time to earn exclusive emotes. How's that? But once again, thank you. Well, thank you so much for the subs. It makes a huge difference. So yeah, I think uh, with all the subs over the last couple of days, it's going to be time to send out a message to the subscribers with, with uh, some fun little video links there. Now let's... Ah, Zen for one. Thank you for the cheer. Boom. He did catch that one until he gets chased away by the Nurgle demon who says, this is my stream. This is all about me. Let's get into some of that lighter weathering as you do. Right down here on these guys. Uh, let's see. Hype train, sub, gift, or use bits to get to the next level. Wow, that's... I wonder if that's something that... Uh, Maybe after you, you do this for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of months or something like that, you start to get... I've never seen that before. <laughs> Hashtag me learning like, like the oils and stuff. So say we all! So say we all! Well, thank you so much, Lamines, for the subscription. It really does... It, but it means a lot because I... Compared so to YouTube... Ah, frozen pawn. Frozen prawn, sorry. Sorry about that, not pawn. But prawn, thank you so much for the subscription. Yeah, I tried to think of something that, you know, okay, th this question was asked a lot in the stream. Or I think I sent out a link. Oh, you know, I'll do that again. I sent out... I think a link to the subscribers one of the videos where I make the the oil brushers here well my own oil brushers the process is pretty darn simple what was important was more important than the how was the the why which is kind of always the case but it also had to do with okay these two colors right here are super transparent right the two colors or these three colors around them, this, this, and this, so are very all. opaque. So oh, Bill Robertson's doing all the gift subbing. Thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate that. I think we got a Calvadia there. So say we all. So say we all. Oh, and Echo Vicious Bunny. Oh, and Mr. Plunderfoot. Ah, those are... I'm just used to seeing those names and other people's streams when so I'm visiting them. All. That is some serious hype right there. That is some very serious hype. Thanks again. Oh, you know what? So Let's do... So I'm going to do some more rust down here. And I'm going to actually let that get very liquid here. Oh. Ah, there's the emotes. Beef in the hole. So How are you doing? So, so by making that more liquid... There we go. So it's a combination of the more liquid. No, oh, thank you, Armored Wolf. He's going to catch one. He knows they're, they're around here somewhere. Until he gets chased away, he's like, I got cleavers. He says, but I got a sword, and I got a dragon, and I got fluorescent paint. But then he says, I got oils. I got oils. Now up here, I'm going to try and get some more lighter tones right around his eyes here. Some wrinkles here. You know what? I'm going to get a touch of my cadmium green light in here. Just a touch of that there. But look at that. Look at the difference that makes. Shows up so much more of that little fold there. And then I'm going to put some of it here. And then we're going to do a little bit more of the traditional kind of blending here. But thanks again, Bill and Mike and Armored Wolf. It, uh, it was, it, let's just say that the, uh, all the subscription and cheering such, that 
really was super valuable last month for paying bills, so it is appreciated. And that made a monstrous difference. Because with, well, I mean, YouTube, you get basically practically nothing from that. So that was the pleasant surprise about about Twitch. Oh, look at this. So we're going to get some greens in here. Some greens there. Some more greens here. Something's got to happen with this. Do I make it darker? I'm going to start out with darker here. We're going to take this little bit of raw umber here. Yep, yeah, I'm going to start out with the darker stuff here. And it's not a glaze, it is just straight up umber. We're going to do that on these handles here before we go back and lighten them up again. I think I'm going to get some more darks here because if I want that rust to stand out and be lighter, I need to get some darks in here. So White Squirrel has a question, what do you think of celery salt? I could I don't know if I've um I don't know if I've ever had celery salt. I don't know if I've ever had I've had sea salt. I don't know if I've ever had celery salt. Oh look at that. That's so that's a raw umber right there. Oh look at that. That's giving us a nice deep rich dark here. And then it's gonna do a little bit of blending with our lighter coat. Look at that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here now. Now, yeah, this is not thinned down. This is actually thicker here. Um, I think, well, let's say I know, well, here, obviously, we've got our, and it seems like everybody just thinks deep dish pizza when they think Chicago. And then, of course, you've got the, the green relish that's here and, and on the hot dogs there's no ketchup just mustard and relish and maybe hot peppers or something like that but the the I don't know if I've ever had celery salt I'm trying to think if I have I, well I might have in a restaurant somewhere and just not known it that's possible that's very possible too uh, and I'm gonna get Look at that, just threw a little bit of dark there. Let's get Mr. Blending Brush. Look at that. I mean, this is just, it's too freaking easy. <laughs> I've said it a billion times, probably gonna say it a million more. And now I'm just gonna add some of that same burnt umber here on his fingernails and his toenails. Yeah, let's do those. You know what? Let's do that on this too. Let's make that a little bit darker there before we make it lighter again. And now that that umber is in place, I'm going to take a touch of this white here. Uh, mustard, relish, onions, tomatoes, pickles, the peppers and celery salt and cucumbers, depending where you go. Yeah, my Actually, my I like the... You know, the, the hot dogs are fine. My favorite thing really is, well, your, your typical Maxwell Street Polish. That's that's really my thing. Because I'm not, I believe it's still true that Chicago was the third largest city in Poland. Because I think we have at least quarter of a million, 300,000 folks of the Polish descent living here. Uh, let, let's just put it this way, when communism fell in, in, in Poland, there, the, there was a solidarity memorial went up, and Lech Walesa came here, not just to Chicago, but he came, oh geez, like five blocks from our house, to a big parade down Archer Avenue. Now, let's get some lighter stuff on a few of these skulls. Not on all of them, just on a few. So I'm just going to chuck that on there. Let's push some of that around now. Like you do. There we go. And uh, 
I've, I've seen you know, more and more people playing around with the oils lately and, and such, and it's really great to see that because it's kind of like people are excited to see me doing the 3D printing. And actually, here, let me show these. Now, this was the, the last one that we did last night, so you can see how the water effects have cured. But for folks that were curious about tinting the heavy gloss jet, look at that blue. Look at that blue. Is that not neat? Now, again, this is not oils. This is a, acrylics here. But look at the, the water effects here from that heavy gloss gel. Now, this is one that we put some more of the... Here, we added on to this. So you can see some of the blue there that's in the water. And then we took the Valhalla and Blizzard right here and added it to the water effects. So I wanted people to see it. Look at that. Look at those water effects right there. That's just the heavy gloss gel, baby. No pouring, none of that kind of stuff. So sorry for the interlude there. I actually just wanted this to have a chance to dry a little bit, actually. I was kind of cheating there a little bit. I was cheating just a bit. So this is cadmium yellow mixed with the terra rosa to give me a more intense rust color which uh what the heck i'm gonna throw it in some of his robe here well uh, I'm, I'm thinking that's a skin dress we'll just we'll just call it that his skin dress let's get the some of that onto his knife there we're also going to now take our blending brush here this stuff has had a little chance to sit for a while we are gonna smooth some of this out here if I had done this 10 minutes ago it would have been disaster it's all in the oh but Carlos Garcia how are you doing and Rob Jedi let's see uh, and Kiwis that's who's being cheeky there oh Nessie Nessie's in the house how are you doing yeah Nessie there's actually three separate episodes now on the 3d printed stuff now I've got other 3d printed things here so check the some sci-fi right here and oh it's in the window now catching sunlight but actually well yeah this is one of the pieces that was in the window earlier this is from artisan guild here so I'm I've been trying to experiment with some of their prints and oh we're finding out just how different the supports are so their supports are very different than the ones from the Pirates vs. Cthulhu Kickstarter. And I'm going to go back to our blending here. Like so. so uh, Nessie, do you still have more Star Wars stuff going on? Uh, no, I don't remove the supports before curing, Rob, so don't worry about that. I was just uh, comparing those to uh, there's like three different companies now that I've tried printing their stuff and that's where I've learned that some folks use heavier supports than others and now that I went into the Cheddarbox software and that's where I started to see oh my gosh yeah you can have heavy medium or light supports now I'm just gonna get some darks in here I think it's it. I did this with the lighter stuff. I'm going to do this with the darker stuff now. Look at what I'm doing here. Because there's a texture there, you can see I'm doing a, a bit of a stipple here. So it's not just blending it. It's also giving me a bit of texture. So let's do that here. Oh, Nessie knows has the Death Troopers, Storm Troopers, and many more. Well, I saw you had the vehicle assembled. That big old vehicle that... Uh, would be really fun to do with the going over what while well, speaking of water effects remember we were talking about that and having it uh, basically kicking up the water that that water stuff not water stuff the liquitex heavy gel would be perfect for that now let me see if i can get this is just Payne's gray that's all it is and now i don't necessarily want to blend this i actually want to have a little bit of texture there. I'll blend it a touch. Nope, nope, I'm going to wait. I'll let that sit there. 
don't be hasty. What does Treebeard say? What does Treebeard say? He says, don't be hasty. Now up here, I was waiting to blend this. Turn it over this way a little bit. Look at that. Because I waited a little bit. This is another reason why people sometimes get brush strokes when they blend. Because they don't just sit there and let it, let it stay. Wait, just do it. Put it down and then wait. And then go back and blend it. So again, I'm going to take this extra paint off of here. Let's see, Gasmanian. Uh, remove supports before printing. Uh, as Rob says, uh, 3D printing is very addictive. It is. You know that uh, when you're sort of waiting for something, like a, something to come UPS or post office, right? You're waiting for something to be shipped to you. That's every time you start up a print, it's like you're waiting. It's like Christmas every day. You're, you're waiting for a little present from the printer. You're also hoping that it's not going to be a lump of coal. Oh, wait, I'm going to get some green into this. I'm just doing a little change here. A little bit of green into this. And your printer can sometimes deliver you a lump of coal, quite literally. Which is why we're still screwing around with settings. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm going to have to just keep screwing around with them. Uh, let's see, Carlos Garcia with the oils. Do you spray any varnish at the end? Most of the time, I never, I just don't touch it afterwards. But, and here, let me do a little quick blending of this here, and I will show you one second. There we go. Okay. So easy to do that. So on my Rohirrim here, so these were, whoops, these were done in oils. But because they're obviously going to be bashed around on the table, I took the exact same stuff I would use on an acrylic miniature right here. My Army Painter Anti-Shine. And I, it's the same stuff that I would use on an acrylic miniature. So this one was done in acrylic. I hit it with the Army Painter Anti-Shine. Same with this. Because once the paint is dry, it's just dry. That's just it. And what's nice is that this stuff starts out clear and it ends clear and it really does the job. It does a really nice job. I got to say that. It is like the one army army painter product that we actually use here. Uh, let's see. Did I hear about Krampus? Oh, the, uh, what the heck is that again? The, the Canuckasaur. I think I'm just tempted to call it the Canuckasaur, but they call it a, Kanaka wear something like that. I'm just gonna call it a Kanakasaurus. I don't know why, but that's the name I'm thinking I'm just gonna use for it. I'm just gonna get blend that out a little bit. So now he's got some knuckles showing on him there. Now face over here, we gotta get some more going on there. So we are going to take some of our, again, yeah, there's a lighter green here. We'll mix this up. We are going to thin this down now because remember, thinner paint sticks to thicker paint. We haven't really painted with much thin down paint yet. So, see how that sticks on there? It's got all those little choppers right here, tiny little choppers. Yes, you can do detailed stuff with oils for sure. I'm actually going to go over here and grab me some of that pink there. So that is the cadmium red mixed with a touch of the white. And because it's thinned down, look at how that look at how that covers. If that had been as thick as the previous layer, basically it would have just torn that layer away. Kanukamira, like Chimera. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see, Frozen Prawn is tempted to grab some oils. Is there something you wouldn't recommend using them for? I've actually used them for all miniatures for terrain. The the one thing that I, I will definitely advocate is get decent oil paints to start out with. 
if you get those cheap little five dollar ten dollar oil sets they just they're not going to give you the results you're looking for look at that look what that pink does so here i'm going to show you this i got this gosh almost four years ago so it's a set of 10. now this is the winton version of windsor newton oils you can see how much i got left and you know i paint a lot of oils this has lasted me well over three years almost four years this was 28 bucks on amazon and i could even you know try and find you the link now if let's say you don't even need the 10. there's a set of six this was 18 bucks there's six tubes 18 bucks but this is decent enough you just don't want the nasty cheap oils because that you'll just be disappointed i i know i'm i've said that a couple of times but you will definitely be disappointed if you just use the the cheap the cheap oils there you will want to use the nicer stuff and here's the thing too that set you saw how much of that set was left that's a set i got nearly four years ago well over half of it is left and you know i paint a ton Hello, of miniatures Lawrence, spark my uh, krampus gave you coal and stuffed the kids in the sack and now as calvadius says and thank you so much mr grunson for the follow it's appreciated uh, now this is the thing <laughs> uh, if if you like to lick your brushes and that again in art school that was quite literally beaten out of us so there was no brush licking going on but if that's something you're in the habit of doing i strongly suggest you cease that habit immediately because first of all your brushes are like why are you sticking me in your face i don't like to be in your face your face is very corrosive and nasty i don't want to be in there uh, now some of the more sadistic teacher they didn't just take your brush away if you stuck it in your mouth they actually took your brush away and gave you like a lollipop and they said well clearly you need something in your mouth and that was <clears throat> they were just trying to strongly emphasize that you should not be sticking those things in your face brushes go outside the face not in the inside the face and if you're using oils you especially don't want brushes inside your face <laughs> because your face is going to be on the floor soon or face down on the floor so yeah that is definitely something that i advise is uh get out of the habit of the whole brush licking thing and i know there's a lot of folks that do it wasn't it privateer press that started that whole thing uh, see, i don't remember if it was in the book of the films but my fear is i always like walking south it feels like going downhill Al oh, Karu, how are you doing uh, let's see krampus gives me sticks krampus for president and frozen prawn oh danny m how are you doing folks be sure to give danny m a follow of course fellow streamers always gotta get people to follow the fellow streamers now here we're thinning this down just like before remember we've done a lot of the heavier duty painting so now we're going to do some thinner stuff and that's going to let me do some of these detail type things and it's not wiping away the paint it's sticking and people will say well how do i know whether to go thicker or thinner and i tell them every single time well the paint's going to let you know you will know very quickly the paint's going to say you know what this is way too thick or the other way around Dow Angriham redeems the Book of Wapple. Let us find ourselves another verse right here. You can't take the voyage of discovery if you never get on the boat. And sometimes the boat leads you right into a hurricane, um, like 3D printing. So, yes, <laughs> I am now familiar with that. And while well, we already saw, you must have dark to show the light. Ah, uh, yes. Think long, think wrong. That's I'm actually serious about that. People really do overthink this. And oh, yes. And he who shall not work on the entire figure at once shall never know context. And haven't we been doing that with this guy? Oh, uh oh. 
Thou shalt not bear false witness against the Wampa Oils. Mm -mm. You don't want to do that. You end up like this guy right here. Or actually, you might end up like this guy if you licked your brush after using the oils. Now, some people might see that as a win. I don't know. Some people might not see that as a win. Hashtag not Nurgle or hashtag be Nurgle. I don't know. And I'm going to get some more of the lighter stuff up here. A little more over here. So now we can really start to bring in... Look at that. Starting to bring in some more of our lighter details. Some We'll go back in and put in some darker details too. So in here we've got that all nice and dark. But we're also going to go back in with some lighter magenta now. Some of these little sores over here. We're going to push some of that lighter magenta out this way as well. Look at that right in between those. Push it out here some more. Always have a blending brush on hand. There we go. Ah, there's some more, what do we call those? Uh, torso mouths or torso teeth or something like that. Yeah, let's just pick up a couple of these guys before we forget about them. Yeah, tiny little choppers with oils, wet over wet. You can do it because I'm doing it right now. Will it be a little bit scary at first? Well, yes, it is. I mean, it, it's just like for me, every time I press go on that 3D printer, I wonder what the horrible thing is going to happen. You know, did I, is the plate clean? Is it centered? You know, did I knock this thing off kilter doing something else? What's the temperature like? You now, is the humidity okay? So I can understand, believe me, <laughs> doing all the 3D printing has really given me a real taste for what it's like to be people that are trying out oils for the first time is Orthorber Studio. And hey, thanks, uh, thanks for the friend request there. So uh, hopefully that came through on Facebook. Now, uh, Folks, be sure to give Orthober Studio a follow. Another fellow Twitch streamer. You want to do that. You know you do. And now here I'm actually going to go thicker because we went thinner. Thin. Now I've got to go even thicker here. If I want that to stick. There we go. It's not just sticking. Look at that. It really... i take my blending brush here and we're going to take that wee little highlight and just expand it out let's do some more of that here on his shoulder as much as I like that purple I do want to get a little bit of the lighter blue there and use the bigger blending brush on this yeah it seems about time yes siree uh, Mr. Plenderfoot says, praise Nurgle and all his Nurgly goodness. Well, it's interesting because, well, you guys, I'm sure some of you saw Kathy painting up her Nurgle guy. I think she just posted pictures of that yesterday or whatever. That Nurgle is, is almost always Kathy's domain. That is, Nurgle has always been her thing. She's always been really big on the Nurgle stuff. For me, it's always been the Zinchi thing. So I'm guessing that uh, really that's a little bit more of the Zinchi goodness there maybe. But I also want to get to uh, this guy here because we did that those preliminary glazes on him. But we've we've been enjoying this and now I'm going to get this is the cadmium red deep. I'm going to start to work in some of that here. Because we have mostly the purple matter in there right now so I want to get some of this basically a warmer pink and also remember the purple matter is one of those very thin colors or, or transparent colors the cadmium red is one of your thicker colors so there we go 
starting to work some of this in we're even going to work some of it in it out here too expand on that where's my blending brush here again get some of this pushed around scumble that around like so there we go push it around here too and it's a little bit like what we did on our troll over here let's get this guy back out here so this is another thing that we did with oils right we got our thalo green we've got that magenta in there and we just push those around do we still have a mike disney in the house the thicker sticks to thin and vice versa yes sir -y. let's see though with summer in the u.s probably unnecessary ever try warming the resin with a hair dryer before printing no i haven't done that well it's uh it's toasty <laughs> it's definitely toasty in the house I, I can uh i can give that a shot i haven't actually tried that yet here let's do something here now oh this is something we did on that calvadia thing let me see if the pictures show it let me go down ah here we go yeah see in her head there see those uh, little veins right there remember how we did those we painted those on we let them sit for five, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, and then we blended those out. But see how there's like layers of veins there? I'm gonna see if I can't do something like that on this guy. Now that we've pretty much got our lighter tones in there, I'm gonna see if I can't do a little bit of that. Uh, Nessie loves the corn. <laughs> All of chaos is fun. Uh, and Orthobo has to side with Kathy. Uh, let's see it was ah, okay uh, let's see, and uh, let's see winter here has helped immensely to make the resin runny now I will say here in the winter time that the basement is going to get colder so I either have to do like a little space heater down there now by cooler I mean well sometimes it can get down in the 50s like <laughs> On the coldest days, it'll be 58, 59 degrees down there, but it's normally in the 60s down there. So I may have to get a little bit of a heater for that. So look what I'm doing here. Look at this. Look at that. See that little vein right there? Do another one here. And we'll just continue those out. What we'll do is we'll let those sit there, and then we're going to try and blend those. Now, excited to get your song from Heath soon. Uh, let's see. Uh, follower. Ah, uh, Mr. Plunderfoot is a zinch. Is, well, I mean, look at my bases for the, where we are, the Cypher Lords here. One second. Boom. Uh, yes, zinchy goodness, baby. Love me, zinch. More zinch, more better. Which is why I've got Rubik Marines and Zangors that I'll be painting as uh, some Patreon series. You got it, baby. Hashtag more zinch, more better. Now this is very thin because everything underneath there is thick. But now that all the, the blending there is kind of out of the way, look at what's happening there. Look at the, we're just going to do this all along here. Hashtag details with oils. Look at that. For all the folks that say, you can't do details with oils. Can't do detailed stuff. Wait a minute, you mean like that? You know, like painting all those little uh, veiny type things? You mean you can't do those with oils? I think you can. I think we just did. Again, that is your the one here, Windsor Newton Series 7. Here, I'm going to get even some more of that away. And right here, look at that. Look at how, believe me, that right there, that line, I could not make that line with acrylics. Couldn't make it that thin. But I've tried. Oils are thinner than water. Here, let's uh, do some of those little veiny things across his head here, maybe. Let's do some of those on his arms. Where I, where I think I'm done with my shading, or at least mostly complete with the shading, let's try some of that. 
since it is a, a somewhat lighter skin tone, I think it'll show up. There we go. There's a couple. Let's do that here too. Uh, where it is? Here it is. Again, that is the brown matter. Or no, that's the purple matter. Sorry. I have been using the brown matter too, but look at that. Look at what that does. And let's uh, do another one here. Let's not go crazy with them, but it's just like chipping or weathering. Oh, we got Big J in the house. How are you doing? Uh, let's see, I remember Chicago. It's crazy cold where the water pipes burst from the ice if you don't have central heating. Uh, oh, Dr. Tentacle, how are you doing? If, if there's anyone who tells you you can't do anything anymore. Uh, it's been fun listening to make progress closer to ready. Uh, oh, and Kauai's still in the oh, brush liquor. Is there a particular brand of oil paints do you recommend? For me, oh, I'm going to I gotta do what I did over here. So give me a second. I just ended up with the Windsor Newton oils. But you could use Grumbacher, uh, even Liquitex. Now, you track... Mm, I think as long as there's a, 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 a name attached to it, like Umbro, Rembrandt, Grumbacher. Uh, I was been tempted to get the uh, Holbein. It kind of, I guess, at that point, it comes down to how much money overall do you want to spend. Now I'll show you. I'll look at that. That would have taken at least three times as long with acrylics. Took no freaking time at all with the oils. Now this set right here. Get this on Amazon. There's 10 colors in here. Now this is, they call it the student grade of Winsor Newton, but heck, I've been using these in this miniature right now. These have been just fine for me. I got these four years ago. 28 bucks for that whole set. It's, and I, I will never ever use up all of those oil paints. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm not kidding. Now let's get to, Let's do the same little veiny thing here like we've done elsewhere. Look at this. Boom, like so. Look at that. How fun is that? And like I said, you, anything that's a name brand, like a Rembrandt or uh, even a Liquitex, I think, should be. Liquitex stuff is not bad. We got ourselves a wog in the paint box. Thank you so much for the raid. We will welcome in those raiders. Oh, look at this. Having so much fun doing our little veiny things here. That is so much fun. So for the folks that are coming in, uh, let's see. Uh, a spar uh, Sparky asks, do you have to varnish between layers? Oh, thanks again, Wog. And the thanks again, Wog. I appreciate the I appreciate the raid. We're having some fun with oils. Now this is not, I know the, the vehicle painter guys, they do all that varnishing between layers. There is no varnishing between layers here because the whole idea is to take advantage of the oils for the wet blending. Now, here's where we were two hours and 30 minutes ago on that, the Nurgle guy that you're seeing now. This is just primer, just Badger Steino Res. Then I took my oils, this, they were thinned down with even more of the white spirits, and we did sort of a little preliminary glaze over it. This is all still wet. It's all still wet. And oh, Lord Dave, thank you so much for the, thank you for the bits. He's going to grab some of those and get chased away by the Nurgle Demon. Oh, we got Dino Titan Edition. Uh, I like to, to see Sherman's It's Spoken, Groomba hair. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is definitely... He, he's enjoying this time for sure. No doubt about that. But if you watch some of the past VODs, and also if you just uh, check out the YouTube channel, just James Wapple on YouTube, you will see that the whole idea behind the oils is to use take advantage of the wet blending. So let me see if I can't... Oh, I'm just going to... Set something up here, just for the heck of it. Just for the heck of it. Here, let's uh, 
Let's throw some color on this here. We're just going to take some of this. It's literally a bright cadmium green. We're just going to chuck that right on there. Now I'm going to take a second brush. This is going to be a blending brush here. Uh, watch what happens as we take this and we push this around. And that's because you've got wet paint that's blending into wet paint. So see how nice and smooth that is? You can see all of these smooth transitions here and even that weathering. So we did this a while ago. Ah, that's right. We were going to go back in here and we're going to smooth out a little bit of that rust there. We did all of this uh, non-metallic metal all in just one go. And the idea is we want to be able to take these previously painted layers. Look at we're, we're mixing those together there. Now here on this handle, what if we wanted to get a something lighter going on? Let's take some of this raw sienna here. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Boo boo buckets. Thank you so much for the follow. It's appreciated. Gandalf appreciates it too. Uh, let's see, I like the way <laughs> Grumbacher. Yeah, that's uh, I, I think. Do we ever really use that much in art school? I don't think so. It was more. We were at the mercy of the local art stores, and I don't think they had so much of that. I don't think they had a lot of it, unfortunately. Now I'm gonna go back in here. There's a little bit of umber. We're going to mix it actually with a little bit of our thalo green here. Thalo, so now we've got ourselves kind of a dark brownish green. Let's do some little detaily things like get some separation here. Since we've pretty much mixed that skin, I'm going to get a little more of my white spirits in there to thin it down. Uh, let's see, this reminds me of the things in Warcraft. He is, uh, well, he's a creature caster figure, and I think Ruin, now obviously the Shmeem Shmerk Shop, uh, that would be Nurgle, but uh, for them it is, I think Ruin is the name of the faction. Now I need to get me some dark over here too again. This is all wet oil paint over wet oil paint. No need to fear. No need to fear the wet oil paint. We're going to get some more. Again, here I'm just going to stipple a little bit. Like so. And take Mr. Blending Brush. And we'll just soften that up a little bit. Now, what are we going to do here on these these scullies here? I'm going to take some of that olive green. We're going to thin that down here. Oh, Gimme says, uh, let's see, can you show the pirate with the water effects at her feet that I was working on? Yes, indeed. I'll do that in just a second here. Let me hit a couple of these. Because the, the water effects are mostly... Now, they're pretty much sealed now, but remember that blue that we mixed in? You're going you're gonna to love how that turned out. I know I did. I'm really, really happy about that. So I'm just kind of darkening down that skin. Let me get a couple of uh, light spots in here for his eyes. Is one second. Can you see now? Oh, they're actually... Oh, his eyes are, his eyes are closed, I think. No, maybe not. No, that's just skin that's hanging down. Never mind. I stand corrected. And I I'll get you your I'll get you the figures in just a second here. The water our little water effect ladies. Alright, we're gonna let those sit there for just a second while we grab. So this is another I added blue to all of them so you can see the difference of that blue. I look at how it's kinda like Nice little crystally. Look at that. Put you over there. This is another one where we added the little bit of blue to it. See it on that side there? You can see some of it right there. But look at all the nifty. I think if I put my finger there, you can see that. 
all those little water drops there. And then this was the one we were painting yesterday. You can really see the blue right here. Look at that. Look at that blue in there. That was mixed with the Liquitex Heavy Gel. And then that's your Valhallen Blizzard mixed with the Heavy Gel. So definitely Valhallen Blizzard mixed with Heavy Gloss Gel will make you melted snow. That That's confirmed now. Oh, Lord Dave has to run. Thanks again for the cheer. Catch you later, Lord Dave. Now, for folks that are maybe in Europe and maybe they're having a hard time getting that speedball thing, this from MIG is a very similar thing right here. So I think that should work for you too. Why don't, let's see, Lady B. Oh, Dave's Mania, they have started karaoke again. Uh, the bass is reminding me of the duel between Arrow Flynn and Basil Rathbone. And I think, let's see, I'm still painting on the skeletons for Summer Project. Well, I, I got to tell you, the, well, I'm not going to do the Ossiarc Bone Reapers as bone. I'm actually going to do them more as metal. Here, let's uh, smooth this out here real quick. One second. There we go. Now, these guys, they also need to have that same... Here, let's thin this down here. Just like we did on some of the other sections, I want to have... There, look at that. Look at that fine little... That's wet oils over wet oils. You can do it. What's the difference? That paint is thick. As in, not thinned down with so much of the white spirits. This is. This has been thinned down with the white spirits. Look at how that goes on there. Look at that. Here, let's have some more of our veins here. Why not? Look at that. Nice and thin. Oh, we yeah, definitely have some on his hand here. Definitely have some on his hand. Like so. And now the, the fun thing that I can do here is, okay, let's see if I want to fade some of those. All I have to do is, you know, let me show you a, a previous example of something painted in oils. There, so see all those veins on her forehead? Those were, were painted, left for 15, 20 minutes, then faded a little bit. Then another layer was put over the top. That was faded. So that that's, again, what the oils can let you do. Some really, really fun stuff like that. Uh, oh, no problem, Gimme. It's uh, it's no big deal. Now, where are we at here? I just want to make sure I've got the, the brush that I was using before. I'm going to get some more veins in his hand here, too. Why well, we got the veins going all over the place? Look at that. Here's some more. I'm going to run right between his fingers there. And then here, I think I'm going to actually darken down the ends of those fingers. Look at this, where we got the green over here. Maybe, maybe we go even more. Let's lighten that up a touch here. Thin it down. Yeah, we'll lighten that up a little bit there on the end of his fingers. A little surprise, instead of going darker, we went a little bit lighter. We get some of that green on his skin skin slash skull over here. I'm going to get some, it's actually some teeth here. It looks, oh, you can see his eyes. So we'll do that. I'll give him some eyes here. We'll give him some teeth. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of this kind of um, uh, violet right here. Give him a little bit of a purple look to his skin. Got to take some of my magenta here. Just do some crazy stuff. Yeah, let's uh, get a brush for blending here and do some of that. Yep, there we go. All kinds of fun, crazy things happening on that. Let's get a little bit of the ultramarine. Ooh, let's do some of this. 
ultramarine blue and a little bit of our white there's a that's going to be an interesting color to work into this too there's a little bit of blue there now yes working that right into that face i'm going to work some of that into his skin too so some of these things are just a little too much of an edge on those. We're going to soften that edge a bit, but also kind of change the color a little bit. Now, I realize with sometimes with the oils, especially when you got more glossy colors like the ultramarine blue, you'll get a little bit of a. It's hard to necessarily see everything that's going on, but I think you get the idea. Oh, let's see, they started, oh, that's the karaoke thing. Ah, uh, Danny, so that's still the, with the back aches and everything. Everyone I know is just having major issues with backs and necks. So that's some of the ultramarine blue that I'm throwing in there, and I'm going to get some of it up on his head now. But again, this is thinned down. It's definitely thinned down. There we go. As many different colors as I can squeeze in here. And there's very little green on this. I just, I was kind of hoping to have something that was Nurgle, but without the usual green. Where's my blending brush? Here it is. See, I stuck that little bit of ultramarine blue there, and now I just blend that right in. I'm going to get some of this. It's ultramarine blue mixed with some of my titanium white. I'm going to get it onto this cleaver here. Scumble that in. Maybe even do a little more. It's not terribly light. It's really just kind of a middle tone. It looks light because of everything else that's there. That's it. It's... I think now even my, my rust is going to start showing up a little bit more because that is more blue. So when we are going to sort of scumble that in too, there we go. I also want to get some of this, maybe even on the on his nails here. But you notice it's a couple of brush strokes. Then I gotta go back and get some some fresh paint because it has picked up some of the paint that's already there. It's a constant balance. There. So underneath there we've got the reddish colors, right? But now having the this cooler grayish blue over the top, it kind of stands out more based on what's behind it. It's kind of what's not there. It's what you can't see, which I know is kind of a weird idea. All right, there's, uh, speaking of lighter color, I need to get the spikes on this little cuff here or whatever. Those got to be lighter, and I need to get some, not sure if that's supposed to be metal or not. I think it'd be more interesting maybe if it was metal instead of just more leather. I'm going to get my titanium wire, thin that down. And I'm just going to get a few little dots here along the edge of that metal. Do the same on the other side here if we haven't already done that. Now this head over here, we have not messed with this in quite a while. We just chucked some of our, when we were doing our glaze down here, we chucked some of that magenta color onto the face. Push that around here, give it a little bit more of a blend, and then let's do uh, maybe some detail things on there. Like, I th yes, I I'm just going to say his eyes are open. I think it's more interesting if the eye is open than if it's closed. We got some teeth on him there, jaw, lighten up this guy a little bit too on his forehead. And is always having a little bit of a blending brush nearby. 
I'm going to grab some of my white and terra rosa here. Got to lighten up the whatever these things are that are sticking through his legs. It can't just be that magenta color. They just kind of get lost that way. Now, I have to say I did not think that I'd be able to do this wet over wet. When I first started with the oils, I didn't think this was going to be possible. And then little by little, I started to see, oh yeah, pretty much anything is possible with the oils. Oh, let's see, you, when are you going to put assembly instructions with the maze you can actually use? Uh, they're not actually, uh, they had to take off for a little bit, Lady B. I I know they have some videos on their YouTube channel, and I know they've got some assembly guides, I think, on the the web store. They are definitely not the easiest things to assemble. That is for sure. As in, <laughs> hashtag a challenge, to say the least. They are not very easy to to deal with that way. I'm going to get me some more of my, here's some darker stuff. Get thinning that down. I need to get a, there we go. Couple of darks in here. Same up there. So that's the Payne's Gray. I'm going to actually chuck a little bit of the Umber in there too. Uh, that, yeah, they, do, they do exist. Now, let's see. What I've, well, what was the, that Death Elemental, I think? I just tried looking at the pictures on the website to get that thing together. That was definitely not the easiest thing in the world to figure out what goes where. I think part of it is because they, they try and give you those option things, right? Okay, you can use this weapon or this. And sometimes it's not always clear. It's like, okay, do both weapons work with that same forearm or do you have to use a different forearm? And that that's where I get kind of confused is when you have those weapon choices that I've, I've, I've actually had some things kind of go haywire a little bit because I ended up putting the wrong forearm with the wrong weapon, not quite realizing which one went with which. All right, here's some of that. That's some of the green. I'm going to get some of these skulls down here. I don't want them all to be light. I'm just going to get some of them a little bit lighter here. I'm going to go actually with some of that bluish gray here. Some of these skulls. Why not? Why not? It's not that it makes it that much lighter. It just makes them a little bit different than the leather that's in front of it here. Oh, let's see. I found the Borel Tree Walker assembly on the web store. Uh, and I remember my siren came with a random extra leg. Nah. Yeah, I, they are, let's put it this way, that is, I, I dread the assembly part of it. There is no doubt about that. The infantry ones are definitely, well, way easier to deal with. I mean, to be, as much as I like the larger creature caster demons and such, my favorite is going to be the infantry figures because, well, they're things that I could actually use in a game. They're also easier for me to get on screen. There's that too. They're way easier than that death element was. And actually for folks here that haven't seen it, let me bring that up. I'm just going to let that sit there for a second. Get this moved over here. Here you are. <clears throat> So this is a previous stream that I did, and I'm going to be making uh, this into a YouTube video. This was also done with oils. You can see he's kind of big because that's all I can get on the screen here. But yeah, all of that was done wet into wet. It was about seven hours or so for the entire thing here. We had a lot of fun with that. Ah, well, I know uh, Eenie Meenies, I think she just started painting one of these yesterday. I'm going to grab me a drink one second.
that is better. Um, yeah, it, now she's doing, uh, I think it's more of a, a dark sort of thing. I, people wanted to see how the fluorescent green would work, so I actually used the fluorescent green oils on that. Again, because people wanted to see how it would work, so I tried to I tried to accommodate when I can. You know what? That's going to be lighter, too. I'm going to thin this down. Because we got plenty of reds and everything else. I'm going to try and get some. This is literally an opposite color. That's more of a green. Okay. Now I'm going to get some of that ultramarine blue here. And I'm just going to mix it. R look at that. I'm mixing that ultramarine blue right in there. That is very fun. Now it separates from that. That's good. I'm also going to give that a little bit of a blend there. So who would have thought that ultramarine blue would make a really fun shading color on flesh tone? It does. Oh, some more of it there. Let's see what we can do over on this side with that ultramarine blue. Get some of it right in here. Let that mix with the magenta that's already there. Ah, uh, this, uh, that needs something. Oh, look at that. I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue. I'm going to just shove it right down in there, too. There's a little bit of the cerulean blue. So it's doing a couple of things. It, see how this is a, a warmer? Oh, little hobbits. Spark my gun, We have an elbow cat. Thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. So look what just happened there. So that's not just light versus dark. Watch this. That's, we haven't done this in a while. Boom. So we make him black and white now. You can see he's got lots of shading, right? But you don't notice the rust there. You don't notice that blue. Now we're going to focus. Now look at So this is what we just did right here. Now watch that point as I bring back the color here real quick. Bring it back. Look what happens. Look at the separation between those two. Now that it's not just light versus dark, we have a warm brown right next to a blue. And it's also kind of, again, it's emphasizing how crazy, bruised, and weird this skin tone is. And all the crazy stuff going on with them. Now, actually, I do have another one of these so Kathy definitely I'll, I'll try and get this thing prepped so Kathy could maybe paint one on her stream I'm gonna get some of this blue down in the shadows over here too and I'm gonna do the same thing under here so that's again that cadmium not cadmium, cerulean blue letting it mixed with that's some of those original glazes and what I mean is like what happened on this guy right here Now I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do some more of that under here. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but this is the other beauty of oils here. So that inside of his hand, look at that. I'm just gonna take some of that blue and just chuck it in there. And that'll be good enough to cover it. It'll actually blend a little bit. So instead of me trying to fight and find a way to blend colors there, I just literally take the brush and shove some oils down in there. I'm going to get some of this Rossi. I'm going to mix a little yellow in there too. And I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of that into here. So that is going to, I think, now separate from the leg a little bit too. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I need to expand some more vibrant colors in my oil collection. And Lady B says the Death Elemental is my second fave behind the Caracola bus. That was uh, that was pretty fun. Well, you were able to see some of that. I'm pretty sure some of the uh, some of the Death Elemental there. That was pretty crazy, wasn't it? With all of the 
that's I think that wasn't where we really came up with the whole red green and the yellow blue number one and yellow blue number two. I swear it was. I think that's where that's where that all came from was from the death elemental. Uh, let's see, Arthur I made you metallics on my necrons and use oils to do the phase weapons. Well, now here's the thing. Okay, let me just drop this little bit here. So, okay, let's put this down here and now. The metallic medium that you saw me use the other day. Now let me see if I can find it here. Is this the, that is titanium, there it is. So, the metallic medium, now this is a recent, <clears throat> I just did this this week, like a few days ago. <clears throat> this is the metallic medium mixed with regular paints, turning any of those paints into a metallic color. I mean, literally look at all those greens and purples and everything else. Put you away. So that was mixing this with just regular paints. Now, what I'm hoping Look at this, oil brusher, aluminum. So the oil brusher, metallic, and there's about three or four of them. My goal was to take this, mix it with this, or any other one of these, and see what happens. Speaking of Necrons, now I don't have any of the new ones yet. I, I wish I did, but that was true metallic metal. See, all of that stuff, look at that, there's OSL on there. So that was me taking metal medium, mix it with acrylic, regular acrylic paints. All of those are different. Look at that. Look at that. The blues and the purples on the destroyer up there. Look at the glow. That is my goal is to do something like that, but with the oils. So it, as much as I love doing my non-metallic metal, I, I don't mind doing TMM. Uh, let's see. Uh, or through, I am definitely an enabler, it would seem. Uh, let's see, I've used the oils now. Can't unopen that part of my mind. Yeah, that's, uh, what is that? You can't unsee it, I think. Is that the expression? Something like, I can't, I can't unsee that ever again. But with oils, why would you ever want to unsee oils? They're fantastic. Now, I'm going to get some really thin titanium white here. Just keep thinning this down. Edge, there we go. I'm going to work some more on some of these teeth. Uh, it was for the Caracolia bus. That was, uh, wasn't that about 12 hours or so? It was two days, 12 hours. Well, technically it was one day, I think, <laughs> because I just kept going later that night. And that was quite a bit of exercise for me, holding that 700-pound bust in my hand. My goodness. Still trying to recover from that, I think. Here, let's get some more, not just lights here, but I'm going to go back in with some darks too on that, on his face. Let's see, Arthur, my dad got me a tube of heavy body acrylic liquid mirror. Oh, that's going to be interesting. That makes a amazing bright white chrome. Let's see, what was the, uh, I know Turbo Dork has something that's sort of like a metal medium. And even oh, Green Stuff World has something that's sort of like a metal medium. I think it's called Arctic White. But the, the key, really interesting thing is when you mix the more of the metal medium with the paint, it gets lighter. And that's it. That lets you shade. That's the big thing, is that it'll let you actually then shade with your metallic paints because what's the everybody does glazes right or whatever over their metallic paints and it kills it hello little hobbits spark my ganja thank you parent fall i appreciate the follow and so does gandalf we both appreciate the follow and i'm going to get me some of this pink here and that's the cadmium red pink not the more magenta pink i don't want to lose some of that dark bruisiness there, but I also got, I do have to get something more light there too. But then again, you must have dark to show light. And we've certainly got darks in there. Now we're starting to get some of our lights in there. Some more here. 
We'll get that. And maybe even over here too. Just some subtle hints of it. Maybe a touch of this on the knee here. Have a blending brush on hand. Let's see, his skin looks almost pearlescent. That is, I'm, I'm glad you're saying that because that's kind of what I was hoping for. Because like, you, you know, you've, you see the green Nurgle skin all the time, but I was hoping this would look kind of that semi-translucent whatever. Little hobbits, spark my ganja. As Gandalf welcomes in, Griffey, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. That's actually, oh, that's a metal hook that his, he his head's sitting on. So, well, now that I see that, I'm going to grab me some of my Terra Rosa here, and we'll just do a little bit of corrosion on that hook then. How long did that take? Hashtag two seconds. There, boom. We just completely changed that hook. Just a, took a few seconds, just a couple of, a little bit of color there. This could use a touch more, not just a lighter tone there, but something more interesting like that same kind of yellowish orange tone. Look at that, it's right next to the green. Yeah, there's a little more going on there. Maybe on this part of it. So I'm, I'm just assuming this whole thing is like some kind of a hide here. That, I think, it's not just darker, but make it warmer to what is happening over here. We've got a whole lot of too much similar values and colors. So this is a little bit of our umber. It's a little bit of our olive green. I'm going to shove some darks into here. We'll start with that and see if we need to add some more lights to I think we do. I think we do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Panava, welcome to Wampleville. We don't bite, so feel free to ask questions. Yes, indeed. And I know with oils, there's always lots of questions. And and I do understand that. Yeah, don't feel. What, what should I say? Embarrassed to have to ask questions about it, because now that I'm doing the 3D printing, I've literally driven a half a dozen people nuts with one question after another and, and i feel i feel bad to keep bugging them all the time because i'm sure that i don't know a month from now maybe just a week or two from now i'm gonna say well how the heck did i not know that myself well i had no way i've never done the 3d printing before heck i didn't even know what questions to ask there were folks they were trying to be nice and, and they would say, well, yeah, just just ask us questions. We'll answer. And I would say, I don't know what questions to ask right now. I have no frame of reference. I think that's the word I'm looking for. I had zero frame of reference. I said, I'd ask you questions. I just don't know what, what they are yet. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to know until I start printing stuff and things go wrong, which, well, of course, that was going to happen. So definitely don't feel, or basing or whatever, don't feel bad about asking questions on that because, well, this is one of the reasons why I try new stuff all the time is because it does constantly remind me of what it's like to be very new at something, well, like the oil painting. It was a very stark reminder and what it's like to be someone who hasn't used it. Hey, we got a 46 and 2 in the house and Nerd House Minis. Uh, let me see. I'm just looking at the chat and. Uh, but they also give uh, 46 and 2 a follow, folks. Because I, I think you. I, I could swear I saw you streaming yesterday and I felt really, really bad because I had to start up mine, I think, or something like that, and I wasn't able to catch yours. So I, I apologize. I apologize. Here was my white here. Let's get some more. Let's get more of an edge on this little cleaver here. 
there that's that's what it's missing it's also missing some of this that's a little better I am going to take some of that chamomile we're gonna take some of the terra rosa we're gonna make some very light rust color here Sneak that into a few places now. Oh, heck, I'm going to go even lighter here. A little bit more of the yellow. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. So what am I trying to do? I am trying to do something along the lines of this. This was done in oils. Actually, this is a YouTube video right here, so you can check this out whenever you need to. Uh, Nerd House is doing pretty well, finishing a bunch of orders and still working on EU and Australia shipping. Um, yeah, that is for sure. Uh, shipping anything anywhere is just no fun, that's for sure. Uh, let's see, went up into the, the mountains and got to hang out and get <laughs> got sunburned. Well, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess depending on how tall that particular mountain was, you were getting that much closer to the sun. Yeah, let's get some of our lighter rust coat. Oh, look at that. Just a couple little dots. Look at that, what that does. That's just your cadmium yellow deep. Mixed a little touch of that. A little touch of that terra rosa. And remember, all this is still wet. All of this oil paint is wet here. Uh, it's not a Diablo. This is... Uh, it's another creature caster figure right here. This is part of their, I think, destruction. You know, some would say corn, but I think theirs is destruction. So this we did the preliminary glazes. So this guy here, this is what he looked like about three hours ago or so. There was no paint on him. There wasn't even the preliminary wash, just primer. That's it. Yeah, I'm hoping later here, after we mess around with our Nurgle guy here, to be able to do some stuff on that one. Now I'm getting to get a little bit more of my lighter tone here. Let's get a little lighter here on this edge. Like you do, there we go. A couple of little dots, that's all. Not complete, not a whole complete line. Ooh, that rope, that needs some color. I'm gonna say Sienna is a good start. Maybe even mix with a little bit of the green. Let's get a few strands of that rope going here. And yeah, this is what's wonderful about the oils. Is it's actually easier to paint fine detail. Look at these. You see those little veins painted in there? That's over wet oil paint. Oils love being painted over wet oils and they don't mind painting very very fine detailed stuff whatsoever they do not mind at all okay some i think i need an even lighter down that i actually might have to i might have to actually go thicker with my paint here because remember thicker paint sticks over thinner paint and vice versa well we got an awful lot of thin paint there now so i'm gonna have to start going thicker which is crazy, but yeah, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Let's get some lighter pink here. Right here, right along. I'm just going to pop that on there. We have not forgotten about Mr. Blending Brush at all. Just going to take him, push that paint around. Like this. There we go. So look at what we got there. We've got bright green, pink, blue. We've got it all right there in just this little area. Just that one little area right there. All kinds of fun stuff going here. Let's uh, get a little bit more of a blend there. This is what's fun about the oils is to be able to do that. Uh, let's see about UPS website. Uh, yep, shipping. Uh, just a a brutal nightmare to even consider at this point. I, I dread having to ship anything anywhere. 
which unfortunately when you do stuff like this for a living like I do, you don't really, you don't get much of a choice in that, unfortunately. Here we are. There. Now what was, there was another, oh, uh, yeah, that was a, a creature, that was, a, that was a Mirce miniature. I was thinking of that raven that I painted on a stream, I think it was last week. I'm gonna get me some some lights over here. Kind of missing out on some of that. And this, there we go. Not just lighter, but also there's some folds and such there. Not quite reflected light, but sort of reflected light. There. Back here, I'm thinking these need to be rusted up a little bit these staples or whatever the heck these things are darken that down now so that's actually a little bit of the green olive green combined with the ah that's better let's combine with the terra rosa now that looks a little bit more rusted up might even go more with the terra rosa here oh that's better Yep. Cadmium yellow. Maybe even more rust. Brighter rust. There we go. So those stand out a little bit more. Before it's just they looked like they were just kind of white sitting there. And now they sort of look like they're corroded a little bit. Oh thanks, Angry Ham. I appreciate that. It's uh and for me, Nurgle is not something that I I paint very often. I mean, I I could pretty much count the number of Nurgle miniatures that I've painted in 20 years on one hand and have fingers to spare. Like fingers, not just one, but fingers to spare. One hand. I think this is maybe the third Nurgle figure that I've ever really painted. So, well, hey, learn new stuff, right? Hashtag new stuff. Always learn new stuff. I'm going to try and... On his teeth right here, I try and do a little bit of a glaze on these. And this is that pin line wash. That means a lot of the white spirits, but that just a touch of the paint. And all it takes is just touching it to that. And let the paint do the work. Don't be pushing it around. Just set it there. Let it do its thing. There are... Oh gosh, there's some more teeth down in here. Holy smokes. Uh, let's see. In the comfy robe now, since the degrees have dropped and it's late. Uh, let's see. What is it now? It's, it's 547 here. Oh my gosh. In, in a few hours, it's going to get really 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 noisy here oh my gosh because again this is these aren't fireworks like people think of fireworks these quite literally are tactical battlefield nuclear weapons i mean you pretty much see three-year-old kids running around with m80s and sticks of dynamite playing with those like they're sparklers and then, then the, the adults have their real fireworks displays. And I mean like set to music, they last a half an hour. Think of whatever your public, your local village or town, what their display is like. Imagine four or five of those going on every single block. That's what happens here. I'm going to get me some more of a highlight on the top edge of that, but it's broken up. See that? It's just kind of, it's not a complete line. It's just broken up. That also, I think, reveals a little bit of the texture. Oh, we got some skulls down here that need some, some blending too. Let's do that. There. I'm going to see if I can get touch of lighter to there and on his nail that's good that's good 
I'm just going to blend those a little bit. Some of that stuff, again, I put it out there a while back. Where is my ultramarine? There it is, my ultramarine violet. I'm going to get some more of this now. I'm thinking in this area, perhaps. We'll see if it, it's uh, going to be what I want. All right, that's a, it's not so much about it being darker. It's just a little different tone. Okay. I needed a little bit of shading, not a lot, but I also needed a slightly different color there. And I think that purple is doing it. Speaking of little skulls, there, there's actually like a couple of skulls stuffed in this armpit here. So I got to figure out what the heck to do with those two. Back to my old, uh, back to my titanium white. I'm gonna mix it with a little touch of that cadmium here. Thin that down some more. I'm gonna go after even some more lights in here. Not sure why yet, but I'm gonna. Same thing here. I want to keep that pink still. I can't even tell if he's got eyes or not. I mean, there there might not be eyes. I might have to just take some blood effects and have like some blood streaming down where his eyes used to be or something like that. That could be, heck, that could be fun. Now I'm going to add me some blue here. Oh, uh, let's see. But the happy birthday. Uh, I said it is... Uh, I'm sorry, Arthur, but I meant to say happy birthday. I think I might have uh, sent you a happy birthday thing already. Uh, let's see, what are you going to Remember the 5th of November. Ah, yeah, that's... Uh, I'm going to get some of that blue onto this skull here. Maybe even onto his his foot over there before I go back with some lighter some lighter stuff here. And we're just gonna throw that on the top of his well, more like a toe. Oh yeah, let's uh, do something here. I haven't really done much with these at all. Let's get some kind of shape going there. Don't want to forget about that stuff. Again, some texture here. Like you do. There we go. Maybe a bit more here, too. That really did help, Evan. Just that. It's the same rust that we did over there. Now, actually, I need to get some of this lighter rust color. Another thing we did it on that side. We need to get some over here. Yeah, just a couple of little dots of it there. With that, just like anything else, like with chipping, with whatever, if you just go too nuts with it, it, it just kind of overwhelms everything. And I know it, it's tough. And just like with the veins, I was wanting to put those veins everywhere. And I had to kind of stop myself and go, nope, nope, kind of. Got to stop with that. Can't do too much of it. Now there, I see I softened that edge a little bit. I just took my blending brush and softened that up. Oh, let's see. <laughs> now I put the 1912 Overture in my head. Oh, let's see. But the same day of the Bill of Rights was signed. International Otaku Day. Uh, let's see. Who needs eyes when you have 250 teeth here and there over your body? Well, I guess it. Uh, I guess that means. Well, maybe these are just taste buds. Then, that's what those actually are. That's uh. Those are some unusual taste buds you got there. Now this is cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of our white. Um, targeting this up here. don't want to lose out on all of the 
magenta stuff, but there we go. They're just that was getting to be a little bit flat right there. I wanted to put some more. I had that's really not something I've done much in with like the last hour and a half or so. Oh yeah, that's better. There we go. I think I'm gonna get some of that blue into his. We had a little hint of it before. I'm gonna just kind of double down on that here. Yeah. So see, there's more. That's cerulean blue mixed with our titanium white. I might even go a little lighter with that. Like so. Yeah, I think that is fun. Because now let's see it transitions into this green over here. Look at that. Now we'll let those kind of blend together. Before I forget, I am going to grab some of my magenta here. That is the purple matter. We're mixing it in with basically the color we've got now. And then I think, okay, so yeah, that. Now our little light cerulean blue mix there is also mixing with some of that magenta type color. Look at that. Okay, that's better now. Very fun. It is pretty hilarious that Kathy was just that was like the last thing that she just painted on her on her stream was a Nurgle figure because again as we've talked about Kathy is all about the Nurgle. Of course, I've kind of zinchified this. I mean, I put I put a bunch of zinchy type colors on this. I'm gonna grab me something to drink here real quick. Ah, so sorry about that. But it's necessary to keep this voice going. All right, what's happening here? It's not bad that that is dark, but oh, you know what? Okay, I just see that there's a. We need to go with some of this again. We're going to take that. We're going to mix brown matter and purple matter. I think we did this before and we live, love the result. I'm going to thin this down a lot. Like a lot. And I'm seeing that there's actually another one of these little cuts right here. So let's do that. And I think I guess I need to put in some more there. Okay, that's uh, that helps. This could use something. I'm gonna go with the little bit of a darkening here. Yeah. Okay. And a couple of these uh, the barnacles here. Those need some more sheeting, maybe. And I might even do something with our little cadmium blue or uh, our cerulean blue thing here. I'm actually going to try and chuck some cerulean blue into the, yeah. Okay. That's pretty fun. Now I'm going to take some of the white here and some of my Payne's gray. I, I, I like the dark there, but it can't be that much dark. It was just a solid mass of dark. Now, look, I'm breaking that up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. I might even lighten that up a touch more. A little bit more here. There we go. Okay, so I think that actually makes whatever that thing is, that pustule or whatever, have a little bit more shape to it than it had before. As much as we need dark to show light, sometimes you need to get your middle tones in there. Uh, let's see, Calvedia says, when you say Zinchi, uh, I know what mini sets you're talking about, but what exactly is it? Uh, it is the Chaos God Zinch. Thank you, Angry Ham. That would be for, well, it's uh, for Warhammer, for 40K, for Age of Sigmar, that sort of thing. So let me see. I'd, I don't think I really have any of my, yeah, I don't really have any, unfortunately. Actually, you could go to my blog and you could see some of my Thousand Sun Space Marines that I painted. 
but this right now this would definitely be considered Nurgle or in let's see what is it that uh, ruin I think is what uh, creature caster would call this particular faction so there's basically four chaos gods and this one they I think they call this destruction or something like that but this would be corn spelled with a K and this one's a little bit more zinchi right here actually oh and then there's slanish so let me show you a couple let me see I have a couple of these things somewhere where's the other one but that's more of a a slanish type of a thing there yeah, and I've got a lot, I've painted a lot of Slanish things. That's kind of my, to me, my my favorite is Zinch, and to me, this is uh, kind of what Zinch is all about. It's it's basically, he's called the Lord of Change. He he basically just kind of takes stuff and messes with it. Like if he wants to see if what the sun looks like if it's purple, and he'll just change it purple just to see what it looks like, just for the heck of it. And when something is kind of tainted by Zinch, maybe you've got like, uh, I don't know, 15 arms and 13 eyeballs or something like that. You know, just a variety is the spice of life. Now, uh, yeah, well, this is the, uh, <laughs> what do we call this? His torso mouth, his torso teeth or something like that. Everybody needs torso teeth. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to try and get this just a straight up here. Magenta, get some of the titanium white mixed in there. That's better. I'm just going to get me a little bit of a... Right in here. I want to get some more of that mid-tone. There we go. Okay, not quite such uh, so liquidy there, but that's better. And I could actually go over this with blood effects or whatever later on if I want to have it like something's actually kind of oozing out of his little uh, torso mouth here. I think I'm going to need to get some more of that magenta over on this side too. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Let's see. I, I'm going to go with Rennie because... For some reason, I've got Renaissance Fair on the mind. I think because of the Celtic art and stuff. Now, that's the other thing that you can see on my blog is my old 2D art. Here. And for folks that maybe don't know, this is in a previous life, 20 years ago, before miniatures. Here's just a small little sample of... This is the 2D art that I used to do. And I actually used to paint things like that wolf. I used to paint that on drums. I painted spacescapes, landscapes. I, I'm a portrait artist by training and trade. So there you go, a little Babylon 5, some Londo and Jakar. And yes, I still want to sculpt those guys with some epoxy sculpt. And we go back even a little bit further here. So there's our pastels. So you can see why I enjoy the oils so much. All the stuff that I was showing you, those are all creature caster miniatures. Here's another one. So this is their death elemental. There we go. So he's big. That's why only a little bit of him can show on the screen at one time. This was also painted with oils. So you can see we've got our object source lighting. And I think we call these his little, his meat friends or something like that. There we go. So that was very fun put him out of harm's way over here so and this is another uh, this is a uh, also kind of considered a chaos faction here too so this is a uh, back to games workshop here it's so actually i painted these you can go on youtube and watch me painting these guys so those are very fun too yeah. hello little hobbits spark my ganja oh let's see i'm gonna say Jaran Jaranastri. And if I mispronounce the screen name, by all means, please tell me. No, 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 you pronounce it this way. Because that's not a problem. I do not mind. 
I wonder if Kathy is listening to Doctor Who at this point. Oh, thanks, Deadbeat Arisa. Oh, thanks. I'm just going to say Jaron. I'm going to go with Jaron if that's okay. It's easier for me to spit that out quickly in the midst of my being distracted painting things. Now, if, if you want to see some stuff that I was just painting over the last three days, I was these are 3D mini 3D uh, or digitally sculpted miniatures that I printed out, and I've been painting these. This was a couple nights ago. This one was last night's right here, including the water effects and everything. And there's another one of the pirate ladies right here. So you can watch all of these. They are still vods on the channel. Eventually, they'll all be turned into YouTube videos, so they're a little bit more permanent for you. Because obviously the Twitch stuff only lasts so long. Now I'm getting some, so I basically mixed an even more muted purple right here, and that's what that's what's going to start to work its way around him. A little bit into here. Look at that. Ah, let's get some of that over here too. There we go. So yes, it's a little bit lighter. But it also gives me that color contrast we've been talking about. Now we've done some more on them. Let's do our little let's do our little color thing here. So, boom! There goes the color. And now you can see all of those, the pinks, the purples, the greens, the blues. Those are gone. Even the rust on the blade here is gone. But you can still see shading, right? So when you're asking for critiques, right, um, and they say make it pop or they say give it more contrast, remember there's more than contrast. So think of this as your value contrast. Now we're going to bring the color back like this. And now... You got the magentas, you got the blues, the greens. That is what we would call color contrast. Oh, thanks, Angraham. I'll catch you later there, John. So let's, let's maybe play with another one here. So, uh, we'll just, well, look at this. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is one of my Harad right here. It's got all kinds of purples and blues and everything else. I'm going to make sure I've got some. Focus on it for you and zoink. You can still see all the shading, right? There's value on there. But when we bring back that color, totally changes totally changes your perspective on that thing and what it what it looks like. Now this I'm thinking of some of that same purple over here. Yes, 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 let's do that. Let's do something like that. Let's see if we can't give him maybe an eyeball here. We'll have to really thin this down. Where is the... There we are. One little eyeball for him there. This guy needs one too. Again, taking that darker stuff, it's thinned down. Now he's got himself a little eyeball. Let's darken some things down here. Even maybe with a little bit of magenta. Oh, we got Dark Spartacus. Uh, let's see, these are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I used to collect Warhammer mini cheese for around 25 years. Yeah, it's... uh, <laughs> We had thought of calling this channel the Subversive Painter because it is... It's really not what you normally see. Well, especially now that I'm doing the oils. Oh, we have Creature Caster has returned. And yeah, well now he's got his with his his veins here and we've been going with the pinks and the greens and we've been able to in, accentuate some of the weathering. Now we're starting to work on some of these smaller elements here, the faces, his victims or his friends. Maybe they're just meat friends. That's all they are. I mean, 
everybody's got to eat. Let's get a little bit. Oh, yeah. Let's get some lighter colors on. We got some so some bones over here. Let's get some lighter stuff going on that. Yes, indeed. Yeah, well, let's see. Did you see the? Oh, you saw the death elemental fly by a couple of times. The the oil paints as. As much as they're fun on the, the smaller infantry size figs like this, when you get to the larger demons, now they're really, really fun because you can do so much more blending on wings and feathers and large areas of skin tone. Oh, believe me, there is a, there is something much bigger than these guys that's coming very soon here. So just prepare yourselves. Uh, let's see. I've been speculating if it's part of the Nom Nom faction. I was really about to comment about the corrupted veins. Oh, thanks. It's uh, well, it's all about what I want to do eventually is after that paint sets for just uh, 15 minutes more, maybe I want to do something like this. So see those veins that are on her head? Well, there's kind of layers of those. So I just I painted a layer, let it sit there 15, 20 minutes, then faded it out. Then put another layer on there, did the same thing 15, 20 minutes later. So that's what I want to do to some of these veins right here, which actually, what the heck, let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. Because these have been here for a little while. So these guys right here, see these two? Now make sure that I've got no paint sitting on this blending brush here. And just go into, look at this. See how that takes a little bit of the edge off right there? This one here. See how it takes a little bit of the edge off? Now it sort of disappears. We got this here. This looks more like a crack than a vein. Now, looks more like a vein because it just sort of disappears like it's going deeper into a skin tone. Look at that. We did the same thing there. We've got a couple of more of these. There. Now, but if I did this too soon, all I would do is just basically rip the paint right off the figure. I had to be patient. I had to wait. So here's a couple more over here. See these guys? Just did a little touch on those. We're going to do these guys here. So this one, see that one right there? What are we going to do? We're just going to take a little bit of the end of that. And look at how that's faded now. Uh, let's see, another is uh, gluttony and envy. And our faction all have sins associated with them, that, but they're different than the traditional seven. Uh, I have an image of the heads on the chain being the voices of corruption that speak about abomination. Oh, and oh, speaking of dice bags, so folks, uh, Armored Wolf, go to their Etsy page. Now, there is a YouTube live session. Speaking of dice bags, so... This is the straight up raw leather here before it's been turned into a dice bag. But this was done with oil paints. Same exact oils that I'm using right now. But go check out the Armored Wolf Etsy page. Or, yeah, Etsy page. Because speaking of Nurgle dice bags or Ruin dice bags or Destruction dice bags or Pleasure dice bags, they're all there. Uh, so see this uh, nice light green that I've got here? I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to see if I can get some of that right over here, too. Uh, let me see. I'm just looking, I'm making sure I'm caught up in the chat here. I know there's been some messaging back and forth amongst the chatters. See what I just did there? A little bit of that green. It had to be thinned down. All right? Had to be thinned out. Let's go back in with just a bit more of that right there. So look at what that just did. Now that the rope starts to stand out a bit. Oh, we got to do some in here too. This again is the beauty of oils. This is a hard to reach area. And you can tell because I haven't done anything there since the initial glazes. Oh, the oils say, I don't care. That's just a challenge for me. Look, I'm just going to take some of that. 
paint, shove it in there, and then I'm going to blend it. I don't have to worry about hitting that or hitting that. I'm actually going to get a little bit more of that green right here too. So this is the other fun thing about oils is that it makes it way easier way easier to get into these hard to reach spots that are normally just a nightmare and a half to get into. Oh, and actually, now he doesn't actually have eyes, right? Uh, his eyes are actually like either cut out or just not there because that's, that's how I've been assuming how he is there. Uh, let's see. The spread, whoops, wait a minute. Greenish gold, greenish mold covering, coloring for the skulls with all the rotten decay that's attributed. Well, let's do that. Here, let's uh, let's start mixing up some greens. I'm gonna take. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I'll take the cadmium green or yellow blue number one. And I'm gonna. Oh, look at that. That's a fun color. That's essentially that in a brownish green. Now, we haven't really done anything to these guys here, so let's just get some green onto them. And maybe some brighter green. Then maybe, ooh, yeah, yeah, let's do some of this or some of our brown. Let's stain these guys. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, let's do, do the, uh, what is that, burnt umber? Yeah, that was raw umber. This is Burnt umber, boom. So this is more of a more of that glaze that I'm putting on here. Just pushing this around. Okay. Let's darken up these guys too. Why not? There we go. That's kind of a more of a stained look there. These I've got to do do and just uh Okay, that's all discussion about instructions. I will let you guys chat amongst yourselves. Ah, yes, yeah, so let's get some more something in here. Maybe use some more of our veins, but first but first let's fade some of these like you do there we go let's get some of those uh, kind of veins in here now don't want to skip out on those come right out of here there we go now something like that you say oh man that got too thick and you say, well, yeah, what's the big deal? It's gone. Not only is it not thick anymore, it's blended in there. Hashtag no mistakes with the oils. Well, you can make mistakes with the oils, but not necessarily the kind that you're thinking about. Let's expand on some veiny things over here too. Sort of like this. And like that. Again, thinning this down. That's going to be the key. And it's basically a one hair brush. It's a, a brush that is useless for acrylic. You cannot get any acrylic paint in this brush. But you can certainly get oils in there. Here, let's do a couple of our veiny things like so. Couple more here, and all of that—that's gonna sort of contribute to that notion that there's, oh, what would you say? He's kind of like semi-translucent, basically. I need to get these ropes a little bit lighter here, so we're taking some of that, basically lighter green, a little bit of Payne's gray. Uh, let's see that red right do -do doom. No, yet they have happy accidents, baby. There we go. We bring back a couple of lights over here, and now we get 
separation with the skin tone that's there. I can go a little bit lighter with that too. Yeah, as long as it is thinner, that's all that matters. Couple of lighter dots right there. And that's good enough. Now we got some turn in that rope. Oh, let's see, what can we do with this? I'm thinking that's actually wood there, so let's leave it at that. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get some more. I'm going to go with a little bit of a glaze of the here. It's our magenta there. That's there we go. Let's uh, have this run right down his head a little bit. We'll do some. We can do some blood effects too later after the. I was at something you just kind of have to wait till after the oil's dry, and we can do that. Uh, let's get some more of our terra rosa. That is just such a. It's amazing how opaque that is. My goodness. This will be a little different type of pink right here. It's actually more of a skin tone in some ways. Oh, look, we're sort of painting skin right here anyway in some form. So let's just uh, have at it over here. Get some lighter touches on the edges of this. Bring out, there's so much neat texture in there. Let's bring some of that out. I think I've got yeah I got my cerulean blue over here. Let's see how light this cerulean blue is because I want to bring that in. There, boom. And now there's just a couple of little dots of it. Again, oil paint, wet over wet, and yet there is texture. I get some of this blue over here to the skulls because I mean naturally why not let's get some of that on our metals here maybe even a little bit more yeah let's go touch lighter on that if we can it's got a little bit of the magenta mixed in there too yeah now we got some separation between those two go back over here And I just got a couple more little light thing, and then we're gonna we're gonna do our little thing where we kill the saturation again. Okay. So we got the. Eh, I'm gonna fade that out just a touch. There. So we've got shape there, right? Let's do this. You still see all of the shading, all the value there, but what you don't see, you don't see that the terra rosa or the cerulean blue anymore. All you see is just the shading. That happy accident, you end up with a cabin, a trees, and uh, and I thought you said misty mountains there. I was just uh, all of a sudden I had a Lord of the Rings thing I was thinking about. I'm gonna take there some of the that's the brown matter and some of the purple matter. Mix those together here. And I'll just, uh, yes, I'm going to do that with blood effects, but I'm just going to put a little. I'm just going to, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm painting in black and white. Someone remind me to bring the color back. There we go. That was pretty wild. Actually, I, I don't know if I was talking about this with somebody, but. We had kind of an evil plan to where I would paint the entire stream with it just being black and white like that. And people would have to figure out, is he painting in black and white? They would just... <laughs> that would, as, as someone who, well, has watched black and white TV at various points in his life, that is, <laughs> that could be an interesting stream right there. Oh, it's another reason why I love my my camera software there that lets me kill that saturation and do that little particular trick. 
I think I'm gonna get some more rust over there and maybe a little bit over here too there we are let's uh, lighten this up I'm gonna get some more of that cadmium yellow some more of the cadmium yellow here and just drop some lighter rust tone on that oh yeah that's metal so let's uh let's get some rust going on this thing a bit or corrosion whatever again we got our nice uh lighter rust up there now <laughs> calvetti thought it was in it well it's i guess it was i guess that was a bonus demonstration right there of forgetting <laughs> forgetting to turn your camera controls back to their normal settings Uh, let's see. Uh, then, a, then a zoink at the. Oh yeah, that's so. Four hours of painting it in black and white, and then all of a sudden turning the color on at the very end. That would be. That would be a real mind, uh, a mind messer right there. So now that's that's kind of to me that's a very zinchy thing to do. And we are a fan of zinch here, so, who knows. If you see something, gosh, we would have to call it like film noir or something like that. It would be film noir night where everything, we paint the entire thing just in black and white. But there's color and you guys don't get to see the color. Ooh, how's that? You guys don't get to see the color till the very end. That could be interesting. Oh, Dr. Spartacus, a really cool idea. Can just describe what colors you're using during the stream. And then they they change it to show that final result, and people have to just well, I guess it would be one way to get people used to uh, thinking about the different colors. They would really know by the end of it what it is that I'm talking about. There, right, let's mess that around a little bit. There we go. Oh, let's get some let's get some cut marks. It's the one thing we haven't done yet on our cleavers here for the butcher zoom there we go bang let's hit the other side here again this is all wet oil paint over wet oil paint there's no there's no uh, was that uh, varnishing in between it's there's no letting it dry it's all just it's very wet over wet it can be done it has been done is there a Kathy in the house? Oh, there she is. The Noir Painting Stream, a reverse Wizard of Oz. I think that might just have to happen. That could be really, really wild. Is that we'll have to keep our eye on? Certainly save a lot of man. Oh, okay. I'm just looking here at the chat. Oh, just, uh, yep, yeah, greetings to, to Kathy and... I don't know. Well, Kathy wasn't around, I think, when I said I've got to prep one of these for her because I have another one of these. Well, I have all of the the Ruin faction infantry here that I'll have to prep for Kathy so she can do her own. As Queen of Nurgle here, she's, she's the one that would be the final arbiter of what is, what the colors should be. Let's see, I'm looking around. Uh, no, just a uh, conversation time. Now, this uh, needs something going on over here. So, speaking of black and white, and I promise I'll turn it on, maybe. But you can see that that's a flat area right there. So, ah, what the heck, let's do it. Let's just, uh, let's paint film noir style and see what that's going to be like. You just have to... Uh, so that's cerulean blue that I'm just putting there now. Obviously a little bit of the titanium white in there. Okay, this is more of the cerulean blue again. Now I'm going to put uh, some of the magenta. This is the lighter magenta color here. We'll mix those up. Do a little bit of a blend. So now you see there's a more shape there. Let's bring the color back. Where are you? There you are. 
So now, there, there's the cerulean blue that I painted. There is the magenta that I painted. Oh, let's gonna go back in there with a little more of that. Right there we go. So remember, that area was a little bit flat, but you can see that that was kind of a fun, fun deal right there. Uh, let's see. If you are in the EU or Kiev, we have, okay, that's just more conversation again. So, oh, I want to do something here with this area. I know we've got that pink going in there, but boy, I'd really... I would love to get even more of an intense pink color there. Right here, it's this is his actual mouth we're looking to paint right here instead of his torso mouth. Yeah, I think I just had to widen that a little bit. It's a little bit too thin of a line. And now, I think those just can't be... They're a little flat color-wise. i got to get something in there, some kind of value in there somehow. Let's do some more of our... This is our pink again here. Uh, Angry Ham just needs to walk around more of his pile of shame. Uh, let's see. It's pretty fun seeing you pick up the color from the palette and apply it in black and white. It is... That... I'm really liking that idea. I am really liking that idea. So here... So I got that... So we had that dark... Remember that dark color initially? The goal here... If it's possible... Is to blend some of this out, not lose all of the dark that's there, but just some, there we go. Okay, yeah, that that helps. And then we'll just look at that. That's a skin tone that we put there hours ago, like literally three hours ago. We're still able to blend that. Very fun. I'm just gonna do this so that now my camera controls are not in my way. I need to get some of that ultramarine violet over here. Let's do that. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's a little darker. A little darker. And then let's blend that in. Let's see. Uh, he's a demonic being. There's There's pizza in the oven. I thought I heard a beeping sound of the, okay, it's at uh, baking temperature. So folks, probably in the next, I want to say 15-ish minutes, I'm going to just take a brief pause to eat some of that pizza that is going to be coming out of the oven and do other things that nature demands. I mean, we are painting a butcher here that should be making some people hungry I'm gonna get a little bit more of the cerulean blue in here look at that down in that some more here oh yes over here too this is more about the color contrast than it is value contrast and you you've seen me talk about it a bazillion times already and sort of demonstrate it with that whole killing the saturation stuff when you've got figures well anything like this or even like him and if we're going to paint him okay um like these guys here you can see that yes there is flames and they're they're red but that red is a much cooler red than the fire so that's that is that color contrast. It's beyond just light and dark. There is much more to contrast than that. Heck, there's even edges. What do I mean by edges? Like right here. Okay. See how that's a hard edge right there? So that's a hard edge. That's a soft edge. Your eye is drawn to that because it's a hard edge. 
it, it's uh, was that the feng shui or whatever you know that the sharp corners aren't supposed to be pointing at you well that this kind of like with the miniature here we're creating these sharp edges and it's supposed to catch the the eye and we're doing that my soft edge here so we put that there then we're going to blend that that creates a soft edge so we got a hard edge there soft edge there we haven't done much adding yellow to this so let's do that let's add some more yellow in some places just because actually we haven't really added much yellow to the skulls here either let's do that where are we at there we go okay that one's got the, the blue on it let's get a little bit of the yellow on that like you do and we'll bring out some of our some of our lights on this so we kind of went back and forth with these we went lighter with them then darker again but the other guy there I've just got to set him aside it's the whole point of oils is actually to be working on multiple figures at the same time oh, let's see get the feeling that you guys get the stuff that will be well actually fireworks are illegal here they no fireworks are legal at all in the state of Illinois not a single one and yet the entire city is covered in a pall of smoke of fireworks yes the fireworks are definitely illegal here and they have been since before I was born and and it well let's just call it the 1871 redecorating when you come here in the city and you see every single house is made of brick this was Kathy's surprise she's like why are all the houses made of brick and I said well there was this little redecorating that we did in 1871 and ever since then houses have to be made out of masonry and not wood and that's how all the houses are here all made out of the finest well not so finest masonry which is why in the winter time these houses are freezers and in the summer time they are ovens it's it's sort of like living inside a kiln that's about when insulation there is no insulation either so you can see look at all the wonderful little colors that we got there but now I can jump back in here and do some bring out a little bit of this it says it's basically a skin texture here I couldn't put these little dots on here even as recently as say 45 minutes ago the paint was just too fresh just like I was saying with this guy here you, we have to we have to let him sit for a good 15 20 minutes or something like that before we can mess around uh, Moe's magic in the house how are you doing uh, let's see who's your daddy asks uh, I don't know if my question was clear I meant can I use oil instead of white spirit as a thinner uh, actually you eh, you don't really want to do that because I, I know somebody that tried to use oh my gosh I think they tried to use olive oil and or linseed oil and they're still waiting for something to dry that they painted oh I don't know two weeks ago three weeks ago so they kind of they abandoned that real quick so that to me says uh you want to stick to the white spirits i know a lot of people are always trying to use something else and unfortunately they usually run into some kind of uh, misadventure with it and to me the the white spirits are the i love them because unlike all the other stuff there's just no smell to it it's not expensive at all and this I got a where's that big old container look at this I think this is 24 now this is 32 ounces or something like that this gigantic container on Amazon was 28 bucks or something now obviously I'm gonna be going through a lot more of it than you will 
Yeah, I know everybody, they, they all kind of think, well, wait a minute, this should work too. And it does, it's not like it's illogical. You say, oh, well, yeah, that that could work. But it's it's not quite the same thing. Now, I'm experiencing that my, now that I'm doing the 3D printing. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm learning that, yeah, you just, you do that one, uh, let's see, if your exposure time is one second longer or shorter, it's not going to work with that resin. Or even with those, uh, I learned now about well, what were the settings for for oh, for the supports. I had no idea that there was three different support settings. I had no, I thought there was one type of support. I go to try and set some support sense up. My wait a minute, why am I seeing all these different settings here? I thought there was just one. Like press supports and supports happen. And the detail said, no, there is more to it than that. So I do, uh, I understand that whole idea of, well, maybe this would work or maybe it wouldn't. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's get this a little more blended there. Okay, and we're going to darken this guy down too. Oh, Goober Town, back in the house. Yeah, that that's uh that's why I like the white spirit because it's more of a thinner, it's not really an oil. So Kathy's been watching the fireworks again. Is it as crazy as usual or less? Uh-huh. Yeah, Kathy had to retreat because the the battlefield nuclear weapons were getting a little bit too noisy. So maybe you'll see her again in the chat. I don't know. Uh that's it. Ah, uh -huh, so you can, uh, so yeah, you can hear them through the mic. Okay. And let, let's put it this way. The, the problem is, it's not just July 4th. They have been setting off heavy artillery since April. And it just, it's, you never know when it's going to happen. I've been sitting here working on something and literally had a miniature go flying out of my hand because these things that are being set off they are not being set off a couple blocks away from the house they're being set up just a stone's throw away like 40 feet away so it's kind of like being in the new mexico desert for a nuclear test and instead of being 10 miles away you're standing i don't know about 30 feet from the platform that's a little bit more what it's like uh, now Hello, I'm gonna get little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Arena Mav, Arena Mav. I'm just uh, gonna kind of call it that way. Oh, and girl painting in the house. How are you doing? Oh, and my favorite tootie foodie. No, this is just the city of Chicago. I I live about nine blocks from Midway Airport. And this has been every 4th of July that I have known my entire life. Anytime I'm in another city for 4th of July and they show their, whatever their town fireworks are, and everybody's all excited and like, wow, that was great. I'm like, my neighbor had a fireworks display that was twice as long as that set to music. And also set two houses on fire. I mean, come on. That's weak. I, I want to see a real fireworks display. I don't want to see something from 10 miles away. Uh, let me see. Uh, and be sure, guys, uh, go check out Goober Town on YouTube if you want some, some time that doesn't have fireworks, that's very calm and relaxed. Definitely go, get, go, go check out Goober Town. Because that, that's where you go to get away from all the noisy fireworks. And cats. No, not get away from cats. You will see cats. So hopefully things have been going well. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the uh, there's a, a park here. And you're going to get a kick out of this. So it's Wentworth Park. You can almost walk there from here. There are... <laughs> There's like 10 fireworks displays going on in the park because, well, there's baseball diamonds there. And there are people that take 
like uh, what is that wheelbarrows they're using uh, push carts and they'll push out a huge batch of fireworks and these things are timed I mean they're literally timed to go off and it's within sight of the fire department firehouse that's right by a school and, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people in well probably not today I don't know but the guys in the fire department they just set up their lawn chairs and they watch the fireworks until somebody blows their hand off and then they they get in the ambulance and they go try and sew their hand back on uh, let's see uh, girl painting being a hero so Kathy's originally from a suburb of Minneapolis up there kind of a northeastern suburb and we were there a 4th of July weekend a while back and through the neighborhood I hear the occasional bottle rocket or a couple of firecrackers or something I'm saying so where's the fireworks and they said well there's gonna be a fireworks thing later tonight and and they did it it was I mean it was it was nice the only thing is that again that is every other house should have a display like that not just one village display or something like that everybody should have their own private fireworks display at the same time because what could possibly go wrong I always uh the one thing I always wish I had was like a a tally of how many fingers and arms are laying on the ground by around this time tomorrow night because not everybody operating these fireworks I'm gonna say they're probably not gonna be Nobel laureates so I would imagine that uh, there's gonna be some uh, well some folks might look like this I don't know I'm thinking there's going to be some uh, rearranged body parts by the end of tonight. And that's that that's okay as long as everybody's happy. Now here I'm just uh, this is what I've been waiting for for quite a while to go back in here with some of my so and get some of these is little uh, I think we call these torso teeth right here. I believe that's what we labeled those. We've got all oh, gridlock sis. Thank you so much for the cheer. He's gonna ooh, there we go. Well Pelleas, he loves sparkly things until he gets chased away by the butcher. He says, No, 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 this is my stream. Those are my bits. He says, Those are my bits. Which I think uh, a couple streams ago, that's when we we brought up the old kibbles and bits commercial. Good grief! That stupid, that stupid thing is going to be going through my head now. That's going to be annoying. Once again, I'm going to find some places to hit with these lighter colors here. Not there. Oh, here we go. This needs a little more sharpness. I'd say right about there. And then we go on the other side of this, we'll grab some of our Payne's Gray and such. Sharpen this up, because that certainly needed it there. And then, let's see if we can't get, there we go. This is the other nifty thing about the oils too, is that this cut mark looks more like a cut mark, because I'm literally dragging it through layers of wet paint. That's really cool to be able to do that. Now, some of these veins, ah, uh, I've been waiting on these too for quite a while to do this. So, I'm going to take this one here and look at where we're, we're just going to fade these out just a bit. Like this one here, that one needs to be faded out. Same thing with the ones on his hand here. And why am I doing that? It's the same principle, and I'll take you back. This is the other example that I've got for it here. So, this was also painted with oils. And you see those veins that are going down the, especially on her forehead right there? There's about three layers, I want to say, 
of veins right there. The first layer, I put it on, waited a bit, then smoothed it out. Then put another layer on, wait a bit, smooth it out. And I'm going to catch up on the chat over here. Uh, mostly senior. Good. It's a full moon weekend. Wow. Uh, oh, you know, it looked three quarters last, I think last night when I saw it, it did look like a three quarters moon. Oh, I need some darks up in this. Yes, indeed. Okay, that's better. And here, too. Then I'm going to go the other way here. I'm going to actually take some of the cadmium yellow light here. Some of my titanium white. Now, this can't actually be very thin. It has to be thicker, believe it or not, to stick. So that's why I say thick paint sticks to thinner. Look at how that sticks. Look at how that sticks. Now, that's the that's another tough thing for people to get used to. They can sort of grasp their, the idea that, well, yeah, thinner paint should stick to thicker paint. But the other way around, that's really freaky for folks. That is just like, wait, what? What are you saying? That can be tough for folks to get used to. Oh, let me see. Oh, Runic Guardian. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Uh, girl painting, never use email way too much. Uh, I'm just looking here. How about my oh, Discord? <laughs> Kathy created a Discord channel. Everybody keeps asking me when I'm going to create one, and I have not done that yet because Discord is another... Well, talk about something that uh, seems to be a never-ending maze of how does this work? To me, that is Discord. It has not been very... hasn't been very friendly to me. I think because Discord can just be so different depending if you're using it on your, your mobile device, on a desktop, whatever, it can be very different. You're logged in when you think you're not logged in and vice versa. And it just cheeses me off. Wow, I've got, we have all kinds of different colors going. Look at that. We got greens. Ooh, let's do this. We have a new crowd in here that hasn't really been able to see it. So, zoink. And that's our favorite word when we kill all the color. So we got value, contrast. You can clearly see lights and darks now. Even this guy here, even as early stages, you can see on his, on his axis there, you can see lights and darks, right? What we're Oh, Zachariah Mini in the house. Now let's bring back that color intensity. And this is where you see, look at all that. Look at all the the blue, the orange, the yellow. Look at here in his, see we've got that phthalo green here. That's what shows up. That's color contrast as opposed to value contrast. Same thing over here, look at that. That green and that grayish color, they're the same value. But because of the color, now you see it. Oh, Runic Guardian. We were thinking, now, grasp, grasp this little fun idea here. So, let's say we're going to be painting this guy here. This is how I would just paint it, literally like this. And I'd say, okay, I'm using cadmium green. I'm using cadmium green over here. Now I'm going to take cerulean blue, and it's going to be mixed with a little bit of that cadmium green. And that's going to go over here to create some there so that's that's cadmium or no cadmium green mixed with cerulean blue over there and now on this sword blade we're going to go with some ultramarine blue here and i'm just going to try to really make this different here well what do you see you see absolutely nothing going on there right what do you see you're like that doesn't look any different to me we're going to get some this is against cerulean blue here. Cerulean blue. So that looks not different at all, I'm sure, to you. I'm going to actually get some phthalo green in here. 
Doesn't look any different to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna up the ante here. I'm gonna go more thalo green, and we're gonna call this film noir. We're actually gonna paint an entire miniature in black and white like this. So let's bring back that color intensity. You see the thalo green here. You see ultramarine thalo and uh, cerulean blue over here. Big difference. Big old difference because it looked more like that before I added those extra colors. But when the color was just removed completely, what did you see? Oh, Zechariah, I didn't think to find Goobertown on here. Oh, that's, uh, it, it's, um, this is something you can do actually yourself. You know, like you take your cell phone. Every cell phone has some kind of a gallery app that'll kill the color, right? Take your miniature, take some pictures, and do that. Do all of your stuff in black and white. Because what, what is the most common thing when people are trying to get critiques? And what do they hear? Make it pop or it needs more contrast. And you'll say, all right, what? What do you mean, more contrast? Does, what needs to be lighter or darker? I don't know. Well, when I was at ReaperCon last year, I was painting the usual Fort Wapple, and people would bring up their miniatures, and they say, would you mind doing a critique for me? And I said, well, okay, it's going to be very public, though, because it's going up on this big screen. And I literally took their miniature, put it under my camera, put it up on the big screen, and the very first thing I did was make it black and white. And want to guess what their reaction was? They went, oh, my goodness. And they said, here, give me that miniature. I'll go fix it. I didn't have to say another word to them. This, all I had to do was show them a black and white picture of their miniature. And they said, ah, okay, I see what you mean. I didn't have to say anything. They literally just went, here, give me that. Give me that miniature. <laughs> Give me an hour. I'll come back. And sure enough, oh, no problem, Revan. It's a good mental workout to imagine the color. It really is. It really is. So we were thinking of doing an entire stream. Like It's going to be weird for people that, uh, you know, maybe come in on a raid or something like that. It's going to be really strange for them. Yeah, that, well, now you can hear... Uh, Again, that's just the baby stuff right now. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's like... Pfft, that's not even a whisper. I want I want the big stuff. Ah, that's a little better. Alright, well, let's start to get some of our cooler reds in here. Because now, that paint has... It's sat there a little bit. See, look at how that covers now. Yeah, look at how that covers. If I had tried putting that on there about a half an hour ago, it would have just slid right off. Uh, let's see, what miniatures are being painted? So these are all from Creature Caster right here. Now, they all started out like this. That's just Badger Stino Res Primer. And then I hit them with basically like a little bit of a pre-glaze. I took some umbers and some siennas and such, hit them like this. And then we've been glazing this. So we started this about six, hour, uh, six hours ago. We started painting these two guys. They looked exactly like this. That's all they look like. With oils, I highly recommend that you paint more than one figure at once. Because remember, I was just telling you about here where I had to wait a good half an hour before I could actually do some nice little blending there. By doing more than one miniature... It forces you, you know, you work on this guy, you say, you know what, I need to wait on him. You work on this guy. You say, you know what, I need to wait on both of those guys, you work on this guy. If you need to wait on all three, you work on more stuff beyond that. So I've got some other figures painted in oils here too. And here we go, we'll bring a couple of these out. These were painted also on live stream. So this one is on my YouTube channel. This was done in oils. And this one's also on my YouTube channel. This was also done with the same oils. And Windsor Newton is the name of the paint. Uh, let me see. I just want to make sure uh, I'm getting all of the... Now, here's the fun thing. Okay, check this out. So, 
Yeah, this one was painted in oils. Was this one painted in oils? They look a lot alike. Which one, which one, which one, which one? This one was painted in oils. That was painted in acrylics, actually with fluorescent paint. You can watch both of these on the YouTube channel, but look at how more intense the color is on the on the oil paints. That's just regular oil paints. That's phthalo green, that cadmium green I was showing you there. That's oils. This is acrylic with fluorescent paint. And that's usually really, really bright. Oil paint has more saturation. It's more intense of a color. Hello, little harmon. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Armored Anathema, thank you so much for the follow. So I've got some other creature caster figures here. Uh, where are you? Oh, we'll just show you this one. I can't quite find my other one. But this is uh, another one of the kind of infantry-sized creature caster figures here. That's also on the YouTube channel. There's, well, it's more like what's not on the YouTube channel. There's also, well, the Patreon page too. You think there's a lot of videos on the YouTube channel? If you actually, if you do the Patreon thing, that's where you'll be able to see about 500 hours worth of videos, and that is not a joke. We actually we we did the math, and I kept telling people, yeah, there's like 150 hours, and people said, uh, Jim, redo your math. It's like you're doing that in uh, in metric. And your actual videos are in imperial measurements. You need to redo your math. And I did. And it immediately jumped from like 150 to more like 320. And I went, oh, okay. I guess I've done a few videos. Well, I've been, I've been making tutorial videos since 2013. And just the basic Army Painter Pledge will get you basically every single video that I've ever done since 2013. Uh, let's see, how much difference between the Winton and Artist line of oils? It's not very big. Now, here, I think this is the difference. I think this will be the difference here. So, so that's Cadmium Deep Hue. If this was the regular tube like this, it would just say cadmium red deep. It would not say cadmium deep hue. So, and this, oh, here's another one. So this is technically not really phthalo green. That is viridian hue. I actually have the real phthalo green. And, and see, here's another one here. That's pale hue. That's, that's where you're kind of, that's where things are cheaper because well, let's put it this way. That set of 10 colors, like this, that's about $28 on Amazon. On a discount, if you get, uh, what is it, cobalt violet, this is ultramarine violet, this is discounted, 37 millimeter, milliliters, it's going to cost you $43, heavily discounted. So that is, that's the difference between the hue and the, what would you say, the actual, the real deal. That's going to be your difference there. So hopefully that kind of helps. Oh, let's see. Oh, Anabolic is in here. Oh, and you asked the question. So never mind. I'm sorry I didn't say your name there. Now, the, the Windsor Newton stuff, that is what I've worked with since the get-go. If you're wondering why haven't I tried other ones, it's mostly because people, most of the videos that I, well, all the videos that I've done are all using the Windsor Newton. If all of a sudden I were to switch brands, people would then say, wait a minute, what are you using? And I've got so many tutorials out there now that are in the Windsor Newton. So far, and also it's like, well, that paint has served me well. Why would I just ditch it for something else anyways? So there's that too. Hey, I can even... I, hey, I can use my finger, right? I can use my finger. That's what we call giving the miniature the finger. Now, speaking of finger painting, it, it goes back a long ways. Where's some of my regular art here? 
So there's some finger painting for you. So that's a pastel that I did back in the day. And all of that smoothing that you see there, that's literally me just sticking the pastel on the paper and smoothing it out with my finger. And I still get to do it today. So there's some other 2D. As you can see, I kind of, I like my portrait painting. But look at this. This is a little bit tighter. As you can see, it's a little more of a realistic rendering or something like that, I guess you would say. Here, let's uh, go back to my, there we go. Oh, and actually these guys here, these were actually painted entirely with contrast paints and just a couple of lighter opaque colors. So this is one of my army painting series. Uh, this was painted in oils right here. I think I've got a couple of dark stored figures. Paint, not, none of these were painted in oils. Actually, I th not, none of those, but I know that figure on the lower right, he was painted in oils. Oh, see that figure on the left-hand side there, the Jamie Lannister? That was done in true metallic metals. That is my ultimate challenge for oil paints, is to do something like this. Again, that's true metallic metals. That was done mixing metal medium with regular paints. I want to try. So that is what I mixed with my regular acrylics. I want to try to mix this with my oils here to make a metallic oil paint. Is it going to work? I have no idea, but we won't know till I try. Anabolic is getting some oil paints next week. Looking forward to playing around with them. I'm telling you, it's just uh, it's so fun. It is so much fun. There Again, there is a learning curve. There is a learning curve, but you know, I'm learning. <laughs> Here's me learning how to 3D print. It was only this Wednesday. I had never actually made a 3D print in my life. And now... Since Wednesday, we've done one, two, three. These are all ones that I printed out myself. Somehow managed to get these things to actually print out of the printer. And I painted these live on stream. And believe me, there's a learning curve to those 3D printers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to be in settings hell for quite a while. Because, yeah, okay, I got some prints early on. That was great. Then I tried some other stuff. And all of a sudden, I wasn't getting prints anymore. Next thing I knew, I was like running out of 90% uh, and resin. So I'm like, okay, we have to slow down on the experimenting here. So what am I doing? I'm just getting a little bit of warmer. It's lighter color, but it's also a bit warmer. Look at that. Yeah, let's chuck in some of that here. But because I've got that red in place, so I can just let that mix. But we're not just going to let it be... We're just not going to let it be red. New, new, new. We're actually going to take a couple of drops of our white spirits here. Yeah, look at this. We're going to take some ultramarine violet. We're going to take some purple matter here. Look at that. Look at how rich and dark that is. Let's get in here and let's do some real darks. Yeah. Let's do some real darks here. Over his teeth. We'll go back and do those teeth again, but I really need some nice serious darks in here. We got a bunch of middle tones. Yeah, that's nice. Middle tones, but we don't have darks. I'm going to grab my smaller blending brush here. You can see how that's all nasty and rough. Well, uh, not for long. Not when we blend it like so. New. Go back to our deep rich color. Uh, let's see. Would you be able to use cheaper artist oils? Don't get the... Uh, gosh... Uh, the only expression I can really say is the dime store variety. You, you, like you go into a craft store or something like that, and there's a set of 30 oils for 10 bucks. You basically, if you get those, you're just kind of setting 10 bucks on fire. You're just better off getting, and it doesn't have to be Winsor Newton. 
It could be Liquid Tax. It could be, oh, heck, it could be Utrecht. I'd rather get Utrecht than some just, you know, Joe Blow oil paints or something like that. As long as it's something that has an, you know, some kind of a recognizable name to it, you you should be okay. I think it should be all right. Uh, let me see. I'm just, uh... Oh yeah, Calvaria is still in the house, and I want to I want to thank people for keeping me company here because, well, we are six hours and fifteen minutes in. So all of the hardy Wapellians that have been here since the beginning, I really appreciate that because, well, it's a whole lot more fun doing this with you guys than it is just me by myself. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my gun, uh, Thank you, Clumsy. I'm just going to pronounce it Clumsy because that just that just sounds really cool to me. So look what I just did. See that dark that I just added? There was very little contrast there. Uh-oh. Party time. It's party time. Well, here, let's uh, let's just have... Well, Pelia Spellbrush do something. And, and for those of you that wonder why doesn't he have a face cam, well, there's no room for such things. But this is me. Quite literally, this is Wapelia Spellbrush. You see the green handle craft brush there. You see the fluorescent paint. You see object source lighting. Oh, and you see freehand. So that is me. It's Colini. Colini. Hey, actually, everybody, uh, speaking of oil paints, Go give Kalini a follow because Kalini is a fellow oil aficionado. So you want to do that too. Now here, we're doing a... Gosh, this is almost like a traditional glaze, except not traditional glaze. We're just going to throw some more of our dark in there. We're going to throw some more dark over here. Because we can do that. We're going to throw some darks just around these guys. Again, it's more of a panel line wash than anything else. It's also kind of changing the the color around a bit because we had a lot of the yellowish-orange going on. Now this brings it a little bit further away from that. We're going to darken some things down here, and then we'll get our blending brush. We'll come back. Now you can see that. Got to make sure that we've got all the old paint off of there. Constantly just scrape that paint off the brush and we can go back in and blend. It's just like what we did on this guy here. We would we'd throw down a color. We get our one of our blending brushes out and just work that in real nice. Now I'm going to look and see. Aha, uh -huh, I see a couple of our like these guys over here. So now that these have probably been there a good hour, they're, they're totally wet. I mean, they, I could completely wipe these things away if I didn't like them. I don't want to do that because I actually want those to stay there. Like here, okay. I see a couple of brush strokes here. It's going to go like that. Brush strokes are gone. I see some brush strokes here. Just get rid of them just like so. Like so. There we are. Uh, let's do this. Take away some of that. Over here I can see we've got kind of a green dot. We want our green dot. We want it to be blended out. Boom. I see some brush strokes over here. Like that. Now those brush strokes are gone. Oh, no problem, Kalini. It's uh, I'm always sad that either I think you and I are either streaming at the same time or I, I mean, oh, that's right. I'm usually I think it's in the evening typically when you're usually streaming, and I'll see like oh, Kalini is live or during the day when Kathy is streaming. And I try I try to save all the bandwidth that I can for Kathy. <laughs> I'm going to move my acrylic ladies off to the side here so we're not getting oil paints all over them. All right, so we've 
Now we've darkened some things down. We can continue to do that. We'll continue with it. Where's, where's my, there it is. So yeah, I think you got, and now they're getting a little bit heavier. I mean, it's still, I'm disappointed that that's like practically silent. I mean, come on. You guys can do way better than that. I've been touting our massive fireworks here, and all I'm getting is little pop guns. Now, of course, they might have used most of it over the last month and a half. Yeah, let's get back to some lighter tones again. So this is a more of a pinkish red now. Oh, yeah. Let's... uh. Not have just the yellowish red. Let's have a different red here. Let's see. I'm looking up, making sure I haven't forgotten anybody in the chat. Nope, I don't think so. Okay, I did that darker tone in there, which means as I do this, those are going to just stand out real nice. Gonna get me some more lighter tones here too. And if it doesn't stick, or if I don't feel like it's sticking, that is where I'm gonna go in and yeah, all of a sudden, bam, that sticks. I just had to thin it down. And sometimes it'll be exactly the opposite where you're going to have to make it thicker. Now the paint's sticking here. So I tried a while back to work on these horns and I could just tell that I needed to give these horns a little while to I had to let that paint all I can it's like bread in a proving drawer I had to let that paint just kind of sit there I'm gonna go back into my phthalo green over here let's work some of that into these horns and it, it's subtle, it's really not going to show. People aren't going to look at that and say, my gosh, look at all the green in those horns. What they are going to say is, oh wow, those horns aren't the same old boring brownish tan like every horn in the world ever painted is. That's why we're going to get some of that green over here too. And yes, we're even going to use some green in our skin tones here. I am not kidding about that. Yeah, we are quite literally painting phthalo green over our red skin tone here. And then we're going to blend that like we've done. Like so. That just makes that red a little bit more of a grayish color. Okay, I'm going to let that sit and we'll go back over here and I'm going to do some more. I want to get some darker stuff on some of these skulls. We're going to take that brown here, some of my phthalo green, and this is going to be very, it's it's dry. There's, there's no thinner added to that whatsoever. And we'll go over our skulls here now and get some essentially some kind of staining on these if I tried doing this even as recently as an hour ago it just it would have failed horribly the paint was too fresh on there it was way too fresh I, I just had to wait until now there we go same same with that skull there I just had to wait let's darken this one down even more Really just kind of stain the heck out of that. What's going on here? Let's get our... Some more darks over here. We'll just to take some of that paint away and then we will blend. You can see the skulls now, they got some greens in them. They got some different stuff going on. Darken him down as well. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Lox Rock. 
Thank you so much for the follow. Gandalf also appreciates that. He really does. You know, if I'm going to have that, that's going to be later. That's going to be that's uh, the ground there. So let's let's lighten that up here with whatever we've got. That is later. Oh, let's try this. There we go. And we'll just uh, lighten up the ground around that. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, and this is, uh, it's all about, it's always about context. I'm going to grab myself a brush here, and I'm just going to throw some real quick here. Because I, it's about that time where I need to get some definition here. So, it's just acrylic black here, and I'm just going to throw it along the edge. Because this is going to let me know, see how much lighter that looks next to that black. I just needed to do something like this. Because that is very distracting, even though I, I hit that with the oils as well. And you can see that oil paint is basically dry enough for me to literally paint that over the top. And here, oils are dry enough. I can do the same thing here. That's going to be a big deal there. Now I can see what the heck is going on with those skulls. And we'll just again get the black here, and then we'll just let this dry and go back to our... A ruin, aka Nurgle. That's better. So much easier. Now I'm not going to stick that into the white spirits there. I'm going to just take a drink here while I let this dry, and let's see the big difference that makes. Not having this was basically the same color as my base. So let me just get a quick drink here. Ah, so sorry about that. Now I'm going to get back over. Ah, this also has to be lighter here. I got lighter colors. I'm just going to thin the heck out of these. Zachariah Mini, thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. Uh, Gandalf appreciates it too, obviously. We are just going to lighten this up now that we've got that, that dark over there. Oh, that's better. Yeah, now our, our darker skulls actually stand out here. This is by no means white or anything like that. It's, it's just a lighter gray. But it does bring out our skulls much more. Like that. Let's. Uh, but I'm really gonna continue this here. I'm kind of liking this lighter color here around the edge of the cloak. Not well, skin cloak. I guess you could call it. It's more like a smock. I guess. I mean, he is a he's supposed to be a butcher after all. I believe so. I suppose it's a smock. But now. Now our darker skulls start to stand out a little bit more. And, I mean, we got green skulls here. We got yellow skulls. We got all kinds of crazy color skulls. Going to double down on some more green here on this guy. Because, you know, why not? Now on these faces here. Or is, yeah, I'm going to get some of that same green on their skin. Let's get some lighter colors on this guy's face now. Got to thin this down. I'm gonna get some teeth on him now. Just a few little teeth there. Grab some of this titanium white. He does have eyes. I'm going to see if I can't sneak some eyes into him. There we go. Some eyes for him now. Maybe even highlight a few strands of hair on that. And 
then I'm going to do some blending on that chain. Actually, I'm going to also do some glazing on that chain, perhaps, of some kind here. I'm going to take my Terra Rosa, a little bit of the Born Umber. We're going to mix those together. Again, it's a glazy Saturday night. No, we don't want the green in there. I'm trying to get enough of the... There we go. It's a little darker now. I'm going to go in here and just do some real quick kind of dark rust type glazes into this. I don't want this to get too dark here because that's kind of the darkest part of his smock, whatever, right there. How about, uh, oh, let's get some of this dark reddish brown into the handle of his cleaver there. And I'm thinking also here on the, yeah. So we've got the lighter basically dots of the rust. Let's get some darker ones. It, it basically kind of makes it look a little more, more pockmarked, I would say. Uh, where's that? I'm going to get this brush out of the way because it's just kind of uh, a little bit distracting there. How's about some more of this dark brown here. Now let's, uh, yeah, let's get some more of the glazing going here. It, it's going to be darker and warmer. It's also going to make that his head. Look, now, look at this. We got, uh, we had a little accident there. Is it a big deal? Heck no. It's all gone. That's it. I'm just looking at his toes here. I think I'm going to try and get an even little bit darker right here, if it's possible. There we go. Same thing on some of these skulls down here. Now I'm going to have to thin this down here, I'm pretty sure. Yep, sending it down definitely does the trick. Let's get some more of that dark into the eyes. What about him? No, we'll just leave him be. We are going to get some of this darker rust color on the uh, meat hook here that's got his head. Okay, we'll get some. Now we get some separation right there. Oh, there's actually a... Uh, oh, look at this. There's this. Where's my... Uh, is that the right one I'm looking for? Or is this what I'm looking for? So, let's see if we can uh, paint some cracks here. Like so. Very thin. There we go. See that? Thin crack right there. And we'll get uh, another small one here. And, yeah, we'll do one more. One more little crack. Then that's it. That's good enough for cracks on the skull. That does it. Now the question is, do I want to go, I'm gonna go a little bit darker here too on the handle? He's nice. Mm, tempted to ah see I gotta do something here on his his knuckles just kind of a weird thing going on there let's put something we gotta put something there it doesn't really matter even what color it is but we've got this weird sort of harsh white ending on that that's no good that's that's better I mean, they're, yes, they're knuckles. It's maybe a bit of a sharper point or something like that, but they're not that sharp. 
I want to see if I can. All right, so going lighter doesn't really get me what I want. We're going to go the other way. So some panes gray so we can just go darker and boom. I mean, boom. I, if you keep trying to go lighter and lighter and nothing happens, as always, you got to go darker. You must have dark to show the light. And that's what we just did here. Now look at the difference that made. Look at what that just did right there. It it's it's so simple, but yet sometimes seems so complex. And again, the more I learn about the 3D printing, the more I learn about you know people say, oh yeah, it's really simple. Well, it, it it's it's simple once you've got it figured out and locked in. Then you just you really do just kind of press go after that. But when you don't have anything locked in yet, it is a whole different deal. So all the folks that are new to the oil painting and such, believe me, I I understand what it feels like to kind of go, I don't even know what questions to ask. I have no idea what the heck's going to happen. And that is still me every time I work with that printer. And I've already tried about a dozen prints. Oh, that's, uh, believe me, there's, uh, yeah. if you, if I was to just put this where well, there's not like all the doors and windows closed and four fans going and stuff like that, you could really, really hear it. Let's put this, I can feel it. You know, where the, the, the theaters kind of pump the vibration into your chair. Well, this chair is vibrating right now. That, that's how close all the fireworks are. And just keep in mind, every single one of those explosions you hear is entirely illegal. And they've been illegal since probably before I was born. But never let legality come in the way of a good fireworks show. Ah. <laughs> So you're you're getting quite the display as well, I, I take it. I'm gonna go back to this. I really do love the burnt umber. I think oh that's another color I was thinking of snagging at some point is Van Dyke Brown. It's as much nostalgia as anything else because Van Dyke Brown, that was the first color we were allowed to use back in the days of watercolors. I mean, literally, that's all we got to use was Van Dyke Brown. We got no other colors for months. And like halfway through the school year, we went to three colors. Yes, all the way to three colors. Now I'm going to have to go back in here with one of my... Here's the... My almost like one here... <laughs> Series sevens, which again, oil paints love the little one hair Windsor Newton Series Seven. Check this out. Once I get this paint ready to go here, <laughs> right, look at that. That is literally one hair. It's because this brush is so beat up. There's only one hair left on it. And I'm the plan is to do a couple of these little super tiny teeth right here. I don't even know if you can see them, but there's one, there's another. So maybe this, uh, I don't know, maybe those little tiny teeth are not the ideal thing to be doing in a, in a firefight here. Uh, let's see. Sadly, there are no fireworks in San Francisco Bay. Yeah, there is a uh, ample amount of, well, as you can tell, there's ample amount of fireworks here. And yeah, this is this is not the only day. This is just going to be the most active day. I'm fairly certain that tomorrow night we are still going to have plenty of fireworks going off. Maybe even the night after that. It's also it's a weekend, so. My guess is that 
two, three o'clock in the morning, they are, this is still going to sound like this. So good luck trying to go to bed early because it won't matter. There we are.